Four players are by Barstool Sports. We are live from California. We're at Carmel, uh, in Carmel. We are at Quail Lodge. Big shout out to the whole crew here having us. Uh, we just had a match against Bob Does Sports. Um, one of the more fun days you've ever been a part of. Full disclosure, we are on the tail end of a um, bender of a golf trip. Just mm. played a million rounds of Exhausted. golf. Exhausted. Drinking, having great dinners, but everybody knows everybody's been in that state. Sunday scaries, Monday scaries, whatever you want to call them. We are in that times a billion right now, but we have an excellent show and we have a couple, um, we have one phenomenal video coming out Tuesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It is us hitting drivers with, what's the guy's name? To one name. Oh, <laughs> nightmare. I can't win with this guy. Like. I try to tee him up. <laughs> oh, please. We, Frankie and I are coming off. I would say one of our better weekends together. Well, definitely. I just sometimes I just can't get a W with you. Rory McIlroy. <laughs> Rory fucking McIlroy is on a four play video. This is a win not only for us, but for everyone that's ever supported the brand, watched a video, listened to a podcast. They were a part of our journey from just that shitty little office in, in New York City uh, that we that you guys started this podcast in talking about God knows what on your first Terrible episode. Office. What the hell did you guys talk about in the, in the first, first episode? First show we ever did, we said we're not a PJ Tour podcast. It's just... We just and what it's evolved into, we talk about space and people's gooches and the whole thing. It's just an <laughs> insane show. And we golfed with Rory McIlroy tonight at 9 p.m. on YouTube. To me, it's like, how did we get here, number one? And number two, how fucking awesome is that? It's Rory a pinch McElroy. yourself moment. I mean, looking back at it, when we were in the moment, I was like, oh, my God. But now thinking about it, it's just, yeah, it's a pinch yourself moment. It's a lifelong memory. I'll say, too, you know, Rory's been, uh, he's one of our top you know three or so white whales that we've been trying to get and we've been telling jokes about how like he's avoiding us we didn't really know if that was real or not we didn't really know if he like, didn't want to work with us he's commented on some barstool stuff but he'd never been on our podcast he'd never done like any videos with him when he walked up that first two we were shaking we were so nervous and we get to do you know during these three days that we kind of film a bunch of stuff with TaylorMade. you know we get to meet a lot of different people that come through that we film videos with men women that are unbelievably impressive and golf excited this one was circled on the calendar, circled on the schedule at like 11 a.m. on like Tuesday, right before like Thanksgiving. Rory McIlroy is going to drive up to this tee box. We're all going to be standing on it. And for an hour, he's going to film a video with us. Mm -hmm. And he could not have been cooler. He was he's he comes off as well advertised as you can be. Right. Everybody raves about Rory. He's the nicest guy. He's such a good beacon for the game of golf. I would say he blew us away and how awesome he blew was. us away. Mm -hmm. Truly incredible. Just a top tier athlete, top tier personality. Couldn't have been nicer. Down to earth. Fuck, man. I can't believe that video is coming out tonight. The, the fact that we're just going to have a video with Rory McIlroy under our belt and in our history, like when you think about all the things that Foreplay has ever done, a video with Rory McIlroy is one of them mm -hmm. is nuts. His smile and just like the bop. Oh, is the bops. bop a part of the video? This one or the next one? It's a giveaway. Probably now. the next one. Oh, man, dude. It's, I mean, it's a little tease. <laughs> That's a tease. It's yeah, a Bass tease says the probably second the one. We have yes. two Rory McIlroy videos coming out, but tomorrow's the first one. Um, he ends up talking about his little bop. It was insane. He had a story about it. It's incredible. So, yeah, I mean, that's tonight. And, um, you know, yeah, we're all just kind of reeling right now. Mm -hmm. yeah, the energy's low. The energy's low, but it shouldn't be because of how exciting right. tomorrow slash tonight is. Yes. And then we also have, um, for all the folks back there, you know, we have in this very show – Rocco Mediate, who we had never interviewed before, we went down to the Colgard Classic and sat down with Rocco Mediate for 45 minutes or so, and he told Tiger Woods stories. Um, he told a lot of stories, talked through golf a lot, and kind of Champions Tour days, and and um, and he's obviously got a very magnetic personality. He loves to kind of sling it. He loves to just be um, open and say whatever he wants. And we kind of brought up, obviously, 2008 U.S. Open at Torrey Pines, him and Tiger, 91 holes, um, you know, the the playoff, the putts. Uh, and he told some fantastic stories about that. Tiger Woods getting inducted into the World Golf Hall of Fame on Wednesday night. So we also have David Faraday, who will be hosting that entire um, induction ceremony at the Players' Championship. Um, so obviously, it's a big Tiger-heavy uh, show. You'll be seeing on Golf Channel all week long. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, they're going to be hammering you with Tiger Woods as they should be because he's getting inducted into the World Golf Hall of Fame. So we got some really good stories from Rocco, um, from Sneaky David Faraday. Sneaky funny. Oh. Like, he didn't try and be funny. He's so um, quick 
and he doesn't realize he's being hilarious, but Trent and I couldn't stop laughing. If you guys watch the YouTube version <laughs> of it, I couldn't stop g- giggling. Like there's this one point Lurch, where he was like, uh, yeah, he was basically saying oh, yes. that we were got, we got teased by, he goes, how amazing was it that Tiger Woods just came back with the father and son event and how good he was, he, how good he was walking. Right. And we were like, yeah, it was amazing. He's just like back. He goes, yeah. Like if you give me a little tease of that, I want like more, I want it now. And then he just goes, no, give me that right now. <laughs> and the way he doubled down, he goes, no, 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 right now. I want you to golf. Like right now. What are you doing right now? Go golf. <laughs> it's very funny. He didn't crack a smile when he said it. Um, he's just one of those guys that he could talk, you laugh and he doesn't realize why you're laughing, but he keeps going on and on. Mm-hmm. Oh God. He's a great Great, great guest. One of my favorite we've ever interviewed in person. He was cool. I mean, I also, when he was playing, I think he was one of the all-time personalities. Mm. Like, people loved him. Um, so I'm excited to hear. That's great. You guys got him for, for an hour? Uh, almost an hour, like 45 minutes. So, so we're Oh, gonna, we could have went three hours. Yeah, we could have gone forever. We kind of- Can we Tiger Woods right now? No, 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 right now. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> what he did. It was amazing. Uh, so we got that and Faraday. Faraday's uh, an all-timer, of course. So he just, everything he says, his accent, his stories- uh, we had him for about 15 minutes or so. So, um, pack show, and then our, you know, our theme for our Roy McIlroy video was um, we basically stood on a tee box on the, on the first hole at this golf course and said, "Just teach us how to hit the golf ball farther with our drivers." And he's like, "Watch this!" And he sent some drives, and then went through each one of us what we could do and try to pick up um, yardage and and club head speed, and we all did. Um, so it's an awesome video. It's informative, and it's just us hanging out with Roy McIlroy. So check that out tonight. 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Shout out to uh, Jake and to Ebug, our guys who uh, who grind, get all those ready. We got a million videos coming out. That's gonna be one of them, obviously. Um, Dadbot Classic. Congratulations to uh, us, yep. Team Riggs. Team Riggs. Team Riggs. Victory. We defeated Josh Isner. Um, sorry, Isner. I'm looking at this trophy right in front of me right now. Hasn't left my side. Hasn't left my hand in uh, 24 hours. It's a say. beautiful trophy with a lot of open spaces on it, which means that this tournament's gonna go on for years and years and years to come. The big thing. Get an invite next year because oh the trip is beyond. Mm-hmm. It's not to be believed how good that trip is. <laughs> I love when you say that. It's the best golf trip. I love using that. Not beyond, to be believed. Not to be believed. Yeah, I think I tweeted. That I will today. say, so as much as Frankie go and I go back and forth, I'm starting to hear little lurchisms, if <laughs> well, you will, that are coming out of Frankie's voice. Well, when you're rubbing around, off on you, him a little bit, I think so. He's a buffet of bits half the time, but when you're around him for so long <laughs> that you start to kind of soak him in. But I think you're like. Liking saying that. Today when I said great one, I didn't even realize I said it. That's when you know something. <laughs> yeah, right. it's seeping in without you being yeah. conscious about it. Um, dude, the Dabot Classic is, it's almost embarrassing to talk about because you feel like an entitled prick that oh, yeah. you even get to go on the golf Absolutely. trip. Absolutely. Josh Isner, what he's able to do. Todd Martin from Peter Millar. The fact that these guys get this group together. The fact that Josh has figured out a way to get this many people from all around the world to come to the, the greatest place on earth. Mm-hmm. A place that is not to be believed. Monterey Peninsula <laughs> is going. not real. Monterey Peninsula is not real. Even if it's raining, wind, if, it's wi- yeah. if it's windy, <laughs> it's just... Even when you're driving from the hotel to wherever to go get gas or something or go to the CVS, you're like, where am I? So that's how I started my day. The day of playing Pebble. Mike Shore picks me up, get in the car, Start ripping tunes with a hot coffee, going Jersey. down 17 mile drive 17 from Spanish drive. Bay to Pebble. Mm. And we stayed the whole way through Cyprus, stayed right, stayed right, stayed right, stayed right. And Jersey, this guy, yes, maybe born on Earth, but he lives in Pluto <laughs> most of the time and then comes back and hangs out with us. He has just got, we're just jamming. Yeah. And this guy's out to lunch. I love him to death. I love yeah. Shores. The so more much, time dude, I spend awesome. with him, the more I love Mike Shore. <laughs> he is awesome. I was dude, looking at it. I took he went surfing, surfing yesterday. Yes. Went what surfing are, for like three hours. Lurch finally convinced me to go in the Pacific Ocean. I know. That video is outrageous. I went out with him Friday night after uh, uh, feel? a big win. Amazing. Yeah. Exceptional. And Riggs we, and I had a small date actually after that day. Yeah, we basically, and then we we ran into these California like teenager mm-hmm. kids. Yeah. You know, they the had like the second. flow, and they're they're straight out of OC basically. Yeah, and they're four play Barstool fans, and we and Lurch like swimming in with it in the pool, and then we were like in the hot tub with these like guys. Unbelievable. Like, yeah, it was really just nice. we were just kind of hanging after a nice really little nice. nice little dip in the ocean. It um, was a trouncing, and uh, yeah, that was the other thing. The whole time we were just trouncing, team Mister. It yeah. was a trouncing. I will say we got to get to your match against Colt, which is all time, but. I, I would say I think my Saturday round at Pebble is probably the best round of golf I've ever played in my life. We were getting texts that you were three under through four at Pebble Beach. Bad wind, rain coming in sideways. Couldn't believe that. I couldn't miss. And we were playing with that. You got our boy Taylor Trias, who was with us. He was my partner. And every time I hit a good shot, he'd just look back and go, what? <laughs> those guys, those two what? brothers, 
the Trius brothers, Connor and Taylor, are some of the funniest people on the planet. Connor is, I think you call him a genetic mistake. He's like six foot nine, he's 300. I mean, how, how heavy is he too? He's got to be close to three. 300, but he wears it so well. Wears I mean, it well. He, he, could be a, he could be a power forward in the NBA, no problem tomorrow. That's how big he mm-hmm. is. And um, he just has these one-liners and the way that they say him and laugh after him, like something like Taylor would just go, what? And like everyone laughs around. I mean, I think Colt's going to end up saying this on his podcast, but. I've, I'm going to steal this forever so everyone listening can steal this. This Connor, is your favorite joke. It's my of all favorite time. joke of all time. Connor at dinner. You got to hit the delivery here. Connor this is at huge. dinner. The waiter comes over and goes, Crushed red pepper. He turns around and goes, What are you fucking nuts? I'm driving. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you can't believe how hard it hits. You cannot believe how hard it hits to tell the waiter that you're driving and denying the crushed red pepper. They don't know what to do. The guy's like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Walks away, just goes to the next person. So all week long, we're just like, what are you, crazy? I'm driving. No matter what happened. A dr- uh, someone hits one in the water. He what are you, go, fucking nuts? He'd, he'd just go, what are you, fucking <laughs> I'm driving. Nuts? Exactly. <laughs> you got you to gotta hit him. <laughs> I'll say... That was the three, three, four days of the Dead by Classic was pound for pound the most I've laughed in my oh life. Oh my god, like I couldn't my stop saying that. What are you crazy? Our buddy Josh Isner is the best guy in the world, most generous person in the world. He puts together this trip that is, you know, it's got to be. And Frankie's right; it's like embarrassing. It was, it's like embarrassing to tweet about it because it's so awesome that you're kind of shoving it people's face. But you have to share it. It's the coolest thing in the world. Puts the whole thing together. Pebble, Spyglass, Spanish. Um, we go to this incredible beach house for dinner one night. It's just so much fun. It's an incredible crew of people. Um, so big so, thanks to our dude, Josh. So but, much work goes into it, too. Just like, and then. Oh, and Todd, Todd Martin. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Get but all the you get there and you're like, all right, we're expand-. you're just really, you have to, so- you just soak it in so much because you're at this golf mecca. Everything's around golf. How good is Rory's, by the way, for breakfast mm. at oh, Spanish yeah. Bay? Mm-hmm. I was yeah. telling you about it prior and you were like. Is it Rory's or Roy's? Roy's. Is it Roy's? Mm-hmm. You okay. just on the little Rory kick. It's Rory week. For right. Us. It's Rory week. Tonight at 9 p.m. <laughs> Eastern Who Standard Time. Rory McIlroy. Wow. Big name. But yeah, that place is fantastic. It's just so oh, everything. Everything great. you do, shuttle Dinners. around to golf, to the driving range. And Josh has gotten it to the point where he's getting like private rooms for us. Oh, We've got 24 guys going to the private Stanton room at Pebble Beach. And <laughs> it's like you can't even understand what's happening, why it's happening, the type of food that's coming out. We're at MPCC Beach Club. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, what is happening? What are we Unlimited doing? Like, how is this real? Waves are crashing. It's just. And then you get to walk out on the third hole and then fourth of Pebble. And then the world is just in front of you. I mean, that is. You just can't believe it. I, I no. Mean, Riggs had an all-time day at Pebble. And then I also had a pretty decent day. I actually went. 2 0 and 1 for the weekend. Let's go. Um, felt really good about my game. My guy Marty, my guy Marty, <laughs> aka Mango, <laughs> just never met a guy like that in my entire life. Maybe no. my favorite. He's one person. of one. One of one. Aloof, I'd say maybe, but also just the nicest fella <laughs> that you've ever seen. I, ca- I call him a golden retriever. Um, Couldn't I, be more gentle and kind. Just I gentle would say. and kind. Maybe not aloof, almost a little too. No, I think sometimes yeah. you have to admit he's <laughs> yeah, a little aloof. Yeah. I think a but- Marty's the kind of guy where if a butterfly flies by him, he's just. I will say he's, he's like on that trip. There's a couple guys around. that are out to lunch but in the best way. In the best way. In the best way. So Ernie- Marty. Ernie can be. Ernie's one of the funniest people. Listen, all these people are there hearing all I these names the that know what we're talking about. <laughs> all I got to tell you is that my my what? partner Marty is just he's so good for me in my game. I yes. mean, when Riggs was making Riggs paired two, you for when a Riggs was pairing us. He goes, Frankie's so psychotic and off the rails, and Marty, you just couldn't be more opposite. So we're just gonna put you guys together. Essentially, it worked being out like, Marty, you you go in the slow lane, and Frankie goes in the fast lane, and you guys together will just have a nice, easy cruise through Pebble Beach. Um, I stepped up to that property on Thursday, and the first thing I said to whoever would listen to me was, all I want to do on Saturday is hit the green on 7 at Pebble Beach. Oh, I had no. previously been 0 for 2. It's one of my top, as it should be everyone's, my top bucket list golf holes to ever play and to ever hit the green on. It's the it's the one that you play on the video game. It's the one that you go on the simulator. It's the one that's your background of your of your laptop that comes stock from like Microsoft because it's like the greatest fucking hole of all time. It's this nice 95 yard wind at your back. Just hit the fucking 60 degree and just get it on the green. Easiest shot on in golf ever. I've my first time I ever played it. I bladed one to the ocean. Second time I ever played it. The only thing I thought about was blading it. So I chunked it off the tee. This time I'm coming off an eagle bid on six, made the birdie on six, played the hole amazing. I'm like rolling into to hole seven, 
confidence all time high. I throw the ball down on a tee, which was controversial. I put up a video and everyone's like, why are you teeing it up? Why is like a eight or nine, 10, whatever you guys want to call me, even though the number is the number of my handicap system. What do you want? The fact that I was teeing up a wedge, I guess is like not, you're not supposed to do that. Cause like, you're not used to it. Like it's almost like a pro should be doing it, but not an amateur. Like, cause it's not what we're used to. I don't know. People suck in on yes. DMS and comments. Correct. Also, it's a level of confidence. Sometimes you're like, I just wanted the ball in the air. Right. Cause you like, if it's on the ground, the chunk is very much in play, but like if you tee it up a little bit, it's like, yeah, maybe I won't be able to like knock this down and have some spin, but just a fraction of more forgiveness right. Right. for it. Right. Yeah. Which that's fine. Long fine. story that's short, right. I didn't even fucking come close. I just <laughs> babied it barely off the tee box and Colt knows who I ended up playing in Sunday singles. He's on the hole in front of me and goes, you need a yardage. He goes, you need a yardage for that second shot, Frankie, just being the meanest person on the planet saying I'm the only guy ever needing a yardage for my second shot at seven in pebble history. And I think he's true. I literally was like, my caddy's like, yeah, you got 62. I was like, <laughs> no, nah, it's not even possible. The hole's 95 yards. Um, it's a good video, though. And then the little Frankie temper change from after so is mad. so good. Uh, shout out to our guy Trent. Trent Daddy couldn't be out here. He's going through a little, uh, little personal stuff. But if, if you see, you know, if you jump on Twitter, um, tweet Trent that you love him. He deserves it. He's the man. But he'll be, he'll be back. I imagine he'll be on Thursday's show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, he just couldn't make it out here for this trip, unfortunately. Um, and well, he, if you're driving, just say I love Trent while you're driving. <laughs> say it out loud. <laughs> just say it out loud. Yeah, it feels yeah. good. He'll feel I love possible. Trent. Yes. Yeah. I As love everyone should forever and always. Yeah, he's just the greatest person ever. <laughs> he is. Um, um, he couldn't make it, so um, so obviously, if, if you're noticing that, you know, he's not here. Um, he'll be back. We did have the uh, Bob Bob does sports boys today at Quail Lodge. We got to get into that too. I got to talk about um, a little Celsius action um, first. Nice little energy drink. Celsius helps you stay active and energized all day long made with premium ingredients zero sugar seven essential vitamins not like a traditional energy energy drink so this puppy's good for you um, and it's delicious flavors including watermelon grape mango passion shout out to mango um passion Marty. fruit raspberry acai acai is a great word it is it's yeah. a healthy one some people say like aki or achi and acai they just, bowls. They just don't know how to hit it it's acai it's got to be acai and enunciating that is fun it's acai great. But I wonder if I it is acai bowls. because, like, it's the almost like, uh, no. like where you say euro or or uh, gyro. You know, there's like two yeah, ways of yeah, saying yeah, it. Like the, yeah, the real people say euro, and like all the Americans say gyro. It'd be funny like if we're doing. Are those spelled the same though? Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. they are. You guys like those the heroes? Euros. Gyros. Mm-hmm. I do like gyros. They're good, aren't they? I love all Greek food. Greek food sneaky good. It's really good. It doesn't do so Tzatziki well in the stomach, sauce. though. Oh, my God. Give me pork <laughs> Slovaki. Nothing does well in that stuff. Pork, like, I had one of the all-time bad eating Absolutely charred <laughs> pork Slovaki and dump it in tzatziki sauce. And I will just say, crush rice. before we leave Isner, love the guy. Well, what are we finishing with this? What's with the mango? Oh, sorry. We're doing the acai thing. It'd be funny if we did the whole acai bit and you don't actually say it, acai. <laughs> acai. <laughs> he just feeds me dairy the whole weekend. Those desserts. You're gross, though. I'm disgusting, but man, did they hit me hard. I need more acai. Go over to Celsius.com to find a store near you, or you can order online at Amazon, Walmart, or Target. Love all those places. Great uh, great services. Um, again, Celsius.com to find a store near you, or you can uh, order online at Amazon, Walmart, or Target. Celsius. Live fit. Yeah, live fit. which we all need to do. do We're not, we did not do that this week. No, no. We did not live fit. Oh, I'm so fat. Except when we right jumped now. in the ocean, that was fun. I know my mom listens to this, and she always hates when I talk about how fat I am right now. Oh, but I am just disgusting. in such a bad health kick right now. Do you think you're in the worst shape of your life right now? No, but did you hear me under my breath today say you're fucking disgusting? And you, to I me, think you laughed a little bit. <laughs> did you say it to me? You were hocking up one of those. Milk, oh, I did. Yes, milk yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and under my breath, as I'm going through my I bag to just grab another ball or like a marker or something, I just go, "He's just fucking <laughs> those disgusting." <milk> <laughs> Those milk cookies. Dude, they're gross. <laughs> That's even more disgusting <laughs> than I ever thought. you drink and eat dairy, you have these milk loogies that just... Yep. Can't breathe. No. Sometimes I turn on the shower. There's doctors about- out there. I turn on the shower sometimes after having dairy, and then I almost throw up because I think the steam hits me and I can't really breathe at the You're allergic time. to dairy. 100%. Your body rejects it. And Actually. You continuously force feed it down your huge gullet. The huge. This girl <laughs> I'm hanging big. out with You're just sh- sent me a bunch of food tests that when I get home, I'm going to take. You need all the tests. I, I literally bought like four or five health tests to figure out what's going on. 
You wear the weight just well. Get a status you look update. fantastic. Just a status update. You never, and then I'm going to take that off and go to the you, you look great. You do not look fat. You just, sound. Like when people uh, probably think we're being harsh on you because like I'm gross, like Riggs is gross, Trent's gross. We're all, all, all gross. All of us, terrible. But, like we watch you do things that are things that are not to be believed again. You know what I mean? Like you See can't, you can't, I'm doing a little buffet of bets. You can't, <laughs> un, you can't imagine how much food you eat. And like, as you're saying, oh, I can't eat this. And you're just eating ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's a fucking cartoon character. Um, before we get on to it, we got to talk about Bob does sports, but I did play Colt Nos in a Sunday singles match. And I know that's going to haunt him for a long time. We went all square tied after 18. He lipped out on 18 to win the match. I hit like a 20 foot comebacker that I didn't even think about um, because I blew the first putt by. He, I got 15 strokes off him. He was very confident going in. I mean, he won the US Amateur. Yeah, I won the USM. I got 15 strokes off him. He's a plus three. So, um, it was a fun day though. Colt's a great guy to to play with because he, so he brings the competition. He's he's awesome at chirping you and like saying mean things, but he also is just a really genuinely nice guy. So yeah. I had a great four hours with him, like just kind of just vibing on the golf course, getting tips from him. It's and crazy it's competitive too. Crazy competitive, but like in a good way. Yeah, no, it's, he yeah. wants in. It's just always too cool for guys that love golf to watch people that are really good at golf. Yeah, he's really good to go 18 holes and have a couple misses or your misses are so good that they're just maybe in the greenside bunker or maybe. But then they get up and down because they re hone it in and make still make par. But did he make any bogeys? He made a couple bogeys, a couple actually, bogeys? but a couple birdies as well. So he um, he I think Spanish Bay is not his favorite golf course on the planet because of the greens. Yeah, so a lot of the times, like out. he'd hit a perfect shot, a per perfect approach shot, and all of a sudden, as we're driving up, like the ball's still moving down yeah. and it goes down into the valley. And Spanish he's just like, "How is that out. even possible?" Dude, my my uh, the day we played Pebble, when again it was like the best round of my entire life. He shot sixty nine at Pebble. He's a two. fantastic golfer. He doesn't you know the thing about them about pros is they can step up to the tee and just rip drive as hard as they can, mm -hmm. or it looks like as hard as they can. It just goes dead straight. Yeah, he does yeah. not. No it curve. doesn't waver like left right. or right at one point he goes i could just pick a blade of grass out there and just bounce the ball <laughs> off it i think he led the tour at one point in driving accuracy uh, he would have to he i mean like his so he does not so, miss the fairway no. so to play against him in too, match you tough. shot 35 on the front right a pebble. Pebble. yeah from the i mean I, that that can't go unnoticed no, like if someone insane. shoots one under on this podcast at we gotta shout Beach. that from the in, a competitive, in a competitive and nature all kinds of weather yeah. All kinds. Rain. Dude, it rained. It was blowing sideways. Then it was like a little bit sunny. It was shocking. What'd you shoot? I shot 77. It's a fantastic round of golf. So we had, I, I legit came out and I had a tweet where I said, Colt, Colt had the funniest chirp of me I've probably ever heard in my life, which is the first hole. I hit a two iron, actually hit it really good. Um, but I was a little self deprecating on Twitter, you know, for the, for the fans. And Colt responded, goes, it looked like you got electrocuted at impact. Yeah. <laughs> he was just sitting there with a transfusion in his mouth off of the first tee. But, but yeah, I had an, I, I went par on one, birdie, birdie, birdie. Oh. Parred five, uh, bogeyed six, slapped it all around like an asshole. Seven, I had like 10 feet, missed it. Eight was playing impossible. Oh my God. I hit three with two iron pin high. Eight's no longer my hole, by the way. I had, <laughs> I, had that, I had that one little run in with eight. We danced for a bit yeah. now. You had a, like a beautiful one night stand with eight. Eight is coming back to haunt my dreams uh -huh. because I just couldn't figure it out. Like bladed one short left and then got it up on that first fairway and then just couldn't have hit it more yeah. in the ocean with the fourth shot. You had a first good day with eight. You thought I'm going to marry this girl. Yeah. And, and then you come back and it's an absolute train wreck. I almost axe murder. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I almost killed Lurch on nine. Was that you in the middle of the green when I hit? Yeah. Well, nah. Yeah, I would say you didn't kill, almost kill us, but you certainly you had an amazing shot, one that you didn't even think you had in the bag. Dude, I had 231 in from a fairway bunker on nine. Downwind. It's downwind, but I hit five iron because there's that. Yeah. Everybody's played pebble. It goes like <laughs> way down. And so again, we're assholes, but this is you're listening to the fucking show, so deal with it. Where like it, you know, it goes way downhill and then it kind of ramps back up and there's that green side yes. bunker. So I was like, five, my five iron, especially out there, it goes like 185 maybe right. or so. So I'm like, I'll I'll fly this. Let's call it 200. Maybe it'll skip up. That'll be good. I mean, I hit a five iron from 231 to just chase right up there. Feet. We were like looking at it, and it just kept rolling up there. I mean, it wouldn't kill. It would have just slapped yeah. us in the ankle, but like. <laughs> It just was like it kept rolling, kept rolling, rolling. It was just in the middle of the green. I looked back there, and like I know Riggs's game. I'm like, well, who was that? What? Oh. That was again. Taylor looked at me and just goes, "What? <laughs> <laughs> what are you crazy? I'm driving." 
fucking what a weekend boys just Oof. uh the best of the best and Absolute i'm sorry bender. for gloating about it on the podcast i think we all are it's embarrassing that we got to do that we and just have to talk about it. you have to talk about it you have to it's something i never thought i'd ever be able to do and you know I'll, I'll continue to feel blessed and happy that we'll be able to do it the holes four through ten are just not to be bullied there he is they're not to be so, bullied Oh, Max Homa Max called Homa. in after getting an ace at Bay Hill on Saturday in the Arnold Palmer Invitational. He called into the tap room, which is the little bar, restaurant, pub uh, at Pebble Beach and bought a round of drinks for our entire crew, um, which could not have been cheap because obviously you're at Pebble Beach. Nope. What a heroic move from him to do that. So Max Homa just continuing to be the best dude of all time. Um, Scotty Scheffler, sneaky, huge stool. He knows everything about it. I mean, he's one of those guys we're having a conversation and, you know, Trent would drop something about, like, the Bachelor podcast. Be, oh, yeah, I remember when you said that. Like, he literally yeah. just loves everything Barstool. Um, he got the win. Kind of just a crazy tournament. Mm -hmm. S stupid firm down there. So, uh, Bay Hill already plays in Impossible most years. I think five under won the golf tournament. Yeah, it was playing Impossible. I was actually with Colt as it was happening, and he's definitely more glued in <laughs> to what's going on than we are. Than we are. And we then, were having lunch at the end of the trip. He was just he was completely zoned in on the screen, getting right. mad that Gary Woodland was kind of dropping shots here and there because he's right. buddies with Gary. And he and, picked them in, like, their dark horse pick yeah. and bets and whatnot. He kept, yeah, he's like, oh, do you see that? That, that move that moved yeah. a little bit left. We're like, yeah. what tournament's going on? What yeah. are you talking about? What? What are you crazy? <laughs> what? I'm driving. <laughs> um, so good. <laughs> Fuck. It works in a lot of different areas. It's, Almost anything. Yeah, hey, you want sunscreen? What are you crazy? Yeah. I'm fucking driving. <laughs> it's like <laughs> then you can play on that. Because you too. make the person that asked you whatever that feel like, terrible. obvious thing that you are being asked for, you make them feel like they completely did something wrong. Like, oh my God. Right. I'm so sorry for offering you red pepper. Like, obviously, or, you're driving. And the joke I don't, I don't on want them. you to, like, drink and drive. <laughs> right. In a sense that because of doing this thing, you're now, gonna like, not with yeah. it. You know what I mean? Right. Like, you're having, like, a whole like, bottle of tequila. Right. Like, like where it's really going to impair your judgment. You're talking about cracked red pepper. So funny. What, <laughs> what are you nuts? What are you crazy? What are you crazy? I'm driving. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Fucking Connor. Um, yeah, I just wasn't clu I, we. I wasn't watching Bay Hill over playing Pebble Beach. It just wasn't happening. No, it was, not possible. We nice Couldn't time in the tap room. We watched a little bit we of it. We got some good but, golf coming right. up this week, so we'll watch that. We got Players Championship this week. Um, Seventeen, the whole deal, the Island Green. Um, Harder to hit than twelve at Augusta for an amateur. You know, people have debated it. Uh, who shut you down there when we did? That? Oh, that was uh, uh, Keith Mitchell. Keith Mitchell was like, "Yes." He goes, "What are you crazy? I'm <laughs> what are you crazy?" <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. So, Players Championship, we're going to have on the Barstool Sports book. Um, make sure, by the way, we are going to do a little odds boost for three guys to make the cut. I believe we're going with uh, Jordan Spieth, John Rahm, and what did we say? Scheffler? I think Scotty Scheffler. Scotty, yep. To make the cut at the Players Championship. I think that's the three we're going with, so that should be exclusive. You can bet with four play. Um, so, if you're in a state where that is legal, go check it out. Get involved. We're going to boost that puppy up. And um, and it's just fun to Let's all just get behind that. You know what I mean? Yes. I love when we're get able to guys get our up. three guys, everyone that's listening to this. If you're in a gambling state, go look for that exclusive bet. It's going to be boosted. We're all going to ride behind it, just like we do for the Super Bowl bets, where it's like, is it going to be a touchback or is it not? Like, let's all just get behind this bet. We're going to get Rom, Scheffler, and Spieth. They just, they just have to make the cut. Is, mm -hmm. that, is that what that's it is? Scheffler's playing great golf. Maybe it's as simple as that. A little bit on just him, make the weekend. Top 10, top 20, something just like that. make the weekend. That's right. That's an awesome bet. Get behind our guys. Get behind our guys. Shoot three or four under for the first couple of days. You make the cut. No problem. Right, just make the yeah. cut. Do whatever John you need John Rahm is one cut. of the greatest players of this generation. What a comment he had, too. You see that? We haven't he's, seen anything in a week, dude. What are you talking I don't know about? what's happening. He made a comment <laughs> that he's not going to stop playing golf until he has more majors than Tiger Woods. I he love that said comment. That? I saw that. My jaw hit the floor. You're talking about – so Frankie's doing this new thing over wedges where he's relaxing the jaw. Yeah, if you listen to the last episode with Dr. Jim Afromo, mm -hmm. he kind of just said it in passing. He goes, yeah, there's a couple things you could do, you know, you know, not so tense hands, relax the jaw, get the brain. I was mm -hmm. just like, when you said it, relax the jaw, I'm thinking – I literally poured truly in my mouth today and just relaxed my jaw until it drooled, drooled out of my mouth. I saw it. But anyways, my jaw hit the work. floor when Romer said that. I, yeah. He's going to be playing forever. He's cocky. It's not gonna it's confident. You got to be, you know. You As gotta, you should be. You're right. the number one ranked player in the world. 100%. I, I have no problem with that when you're, if he was, you know, the the 37th ranked player in the world, then mm -hmm. I'd be like, all right, I yep. mean, what are we doing here? Let's be, yep. he's the best player in the world. Mm -hmm. Tens of millions of people play golf. 
He's just the best at it. Mm-hmm. I mean, we talked about good cold nose disc. He's just a billion times better than cold nose to golf. Not even close. Um, we got to talk about this Quail Lodge match and the day that we had today. Before um, we get into that, sure. A little shout out to my boy Chris Goderup, who I think will join us on a podcast maybe later this week. What a stud. Stud. Oklahoma kid, Jersey kid originally from like my hometown, know his family quite well, enters tournament or wins the Puerto Rican Open collegiate event. Uh, so he gets exemption, plays in the Puerto Rico Open, finishes T seventh. Wow. That's incredible. Fantastic. He top tend it. He top tend it. I know we were going nuts about it all weekend going in. Mm-hmm. And then, like I said, I mean, I fell off planet Earth after like Saturday. Yeah. So that's amazing. Yeah. We were quasi checking in. Also, your West Coast. They're, you know, East Coast. There's a Have few you heard hours from different. Him? Yeah. We chatted. So he's pumped to come on the podcast. We'll get him on. Awesome. Um, but a little teaser to that because I want to hear, and I'm sure we all do, about a college kid living the dream of playing oh on the PGA God. Tour. Is he the number one ranked amateur in the country or something like that? He's the number one college, college golfer. There's a couple different rating systems out there, but okay. he is the number one collegiate golfer in the Let's country. Let's just release our own. So he's just... Should we have a four-play college golfer? four-play college golf <laughs> rankings 2022 mm-hmm. spring. We have one of one. Late winter. Chris Goderup. Yeah, our number one ranked player is Chris Goderup. From we have Rums a two? In New Jersey. Yeah, do we have a two? No chance. Is that kid uh, from MSU that we had on still still in Pyatt? college? Yeah. James Pyatt? Did he graduate? Uh, I don't know. That's a good Let's question. put him at two. We'll put him at two. James Pyatt's two. Yeah, and nothing. if he's not a college golfer anymore, then he's still on our college I golfer. I got absolutely <laughs> nothing for he's you. He's number two. Yep. Um, we got to start doing a lot of our own. Like We need to start calling out or giving out awards and accolades. Like We should do our own pip. I we get a lot that. of tweets about that. I love this We idea. just give out our own pip. Let's play off this idea. What are we going to give out? Anything that we want. <laughs> Golfer of the year, collegiate player of the year. Yes, yeah, so we just award. send them gear. Yeah. Congratulations like, to Chris Goddard. He's the number one ranked college golfer in the four play college golf rankings. Yes. And if he finishes that way at the end of the year, we just give him a bunch of stuff. I'd be shocked if he's not number one on that list. I don't I don't see us changing that at any moment. That's a good point. It works. Like we he's just have to play terrible. We're absolutely even then I don't able, know that we have another another guy. We are the committee. We are able to just give out whoever we want. Hundred percent. We have to do the PIP thing. Yes. Well, yeah, our own pip. And it's March Madness. Why don't we do our own fucking pip winner where it's like a March Madness pip bracket? bracket. We only put the people we think should be in there, right? Mm-hmm. Like maybe Tiger's not in there because he's like, you know what I mean? We'll talk about it. We'll discuss yeah. it. No, we winner. are talking. That's what we're doing. We're I would say discussing. Tiger's going to be in it. We'll discuss it. Then he's just going to win. Tell me Tiger Woods not going to be on this thing. What are we doing? Because <laughs> it's I'm tr- I've been trying to get those guys that put right. the work in the Home win. The like I'm trying to get them to like have an, an incentive to win an extra prize. If you just put Tiger Woods in there, he wins. So, it's but like, if if we make the like the tournament based on that noise what, the, what they're doing, like you know, outside of the game of golf, like how hard who's the most to- valuable person on the internet for golf? Yes, is the is the base. I'll say a lot of people were. Uh, perplexed that Max Homa did not get the top 10. For he them. is perplexed. He um, had this awesome retweet or quote tweet where the tour put out a video of him hitting like a low missile laser stinger and they're like stinger season. And he quote tweeted it and said, can you, and this is a PGA tour tweeted it out. So he wrote, can you guys at me next time so I can finish top 20 in the pip next year? And it Whoa. got like 30,000 likes. So that's why I mean. The guy moves the needle because he he's does. just fucking... We also talked about last week how like tweets are like farts in the wind. It doesn't matter. They just you see them, you like it, you move on. Mm-hmm. Does it actually make any impact? It's not a video. It's not. It's not content. It's just a fucking tweet. So I don't know where he gets the points. Where a guy like um, uh, Bubba is actually making videos, creating content, TikTok, million likes. There, you know what I mean? It's there's a lot to think about. No, there is for sure. I um and, and like we kind of had this this theme for a year straight. It feels like of if somebody is trying as hard as Max Homa is clearly trying, that's what you should be incentivizing. Mm-hmm. That is like, you know, if you're just a bigger star, that's sort of just natural. That's part of kind of your ethos and who you are. You can't really change that much about that. But if you genuinely are like whipping out your phone and tweeting and trying to get traction, interactions and all that, that is what the PGA Tour should be incentivizing. So right. I agree with Max Homa on that front. I'm glad that he fired a little uh, missile. That's right awesome. There. Um, we got to get into Quail Lodge and the match today with Robbie Berger and the fellows first. Um, if you're if you're looking for maybe a little different way to play uh, golf, I got to talk about um, Animals. Download Animals for free. Um, we played this game. Uh, played it with the 
crew that invented it, invented the app. Minnesota guys, Midwestern nice. Um, they've been playing golf with each other forever. They've been slinging around these terminologies. Um, they decided to whip up an app, and it's just a lot of uh, fun, and it's it's cool to go out and play golf in a completely different way and care a lot more about, like, hitting a, a cart path or a rock or somebody being in a bunker um, and not just their traditional score. You could have two or three or four bad holes in a row, whatever it might be, um, but still be defeating somebody else. Beverage cart rolls around. Um, it incorporates all that. So go uh, check out Animules. That is A-N-A-M-U-L-E-S. Barely got through that one. Animules. Download Animules today for free. Available free for free in Apple and Android app stores. Um, go check it out. Add it to your regular gameplay when you go play with the uh, the fellas, the gals, whoever you like to play golf with. Animules is a great time. Lurch, does your face hurt? No. It's killing me. Ooh, you that's that a day one five too? golf joke right I there. I didn't. My face actually hurts because I'm so sunburned. So I was like, man, my face hurts. And I, I was going to say that. And then I was like, someone's going to say it's killing me. So no, just, but then just, your other, like, just like, I'm tired golf joke is Avery. Shout out to Avery. Oh, yeah. Hits a drive on the 18th. And Frankie goes, Today. did somebody order some snapper? <laughs> <laughs> well, fucking just like Connor Trius from the, the dad day. pod. He's so random and funny. At one point, he just kept saying, how's the hell of it? Yeah. And he was talking no about sense. cod. and how's Well, that's because his jokes, He like he's like, what is the most random thing you can think of right now? And then he'll just say that in a sentence. So I'd be standing over and then look putt around and goes, hey, Frankie, how's the hell of it? He'll also and give I'd you say, a starter laugh. Know. Like, he'll, he'll like yeah. start the laughter. It's awesome. And then, and then it's just that. Bob does sports. What an absolute match today. Um We've been tracking these guys down for a long time. I've known Robbie for years at this point. His his cousin, and they're really tight. The whole family's really tight. My my one of my best friends, Kyle. Um, he is his first cousin, and I've always heard about Robbie during the Snapchat days, like eight or nine years ago, when Snapchat was like a big thing, and before people were going live on Instagram and all this stuff. Before there were stories. Um, I just knew this kid was so fucking funny and he would have, he had this voice and now we all have come to know it. He's just like, uh, he's got this energy and this absolutely funny way of speaking. And he has this crew now and he's doing amazing for himself. They have Bob does sports on YouTube. He's got hundreds of, he's got over a hundred thousand subscribers already. He's just doing this all on his own. The kid's fucking just grinding to get that many followers and subscribers just on your own and not have like an entity to like push you. And like what he's doing is fucking incredible. So happy for him. And what an experience to play with these guys today. I mean, what'd you guys think? First time really seeing the crew in action. It was to me, it was all I would time. say top to bottom, start to finish. That was the most fun. I think I've ever had filming a video <laughs> yeah. with what we, with what we do. We I mean, got Robbie Berger, Bobby Fairways, and then you've got Joey Coldcuts, Who's just a specimen of a human being with his crazy pants and his laugh that he says. And when he laughs, his tongue comes out. Like mm -hmm. I've never seen before. <laughs> You've got fucking Fat Perez, who is not a real person. Nope. He can't I mean, be. Looks like Pat Perez. I was asking he's, if he was like in a Roy McElroy was just in uh, inside of him. Yeah. He's fucking huge. You can't believe he can get around the ball. And he's just an <clears throat> absolute stick. He's just, so good. When you guys watch this video, you're not going to believe how good this guy is. He doesn't miss a fairway. He does not miss a green. He does not miss a chip. He just doesn't miss. No. He's like the greatest amateur, just regular guy off the street player that we've played with on video by a long shot. He's never rushed anywhere in his life. No, and his swing is that in spades. His swing is buttery. So soft and buttery. He like kind of saws everything off. Mm -hmm. He doesn't rush to hit the ball. The guy's huge. He doesn't eat. Well, that now I've got a couple questions about that. He's I'll say he's a human keg, certainly. <laughs> that was such a good joke by Joey Colcutts. He's just he goes, he's just a keg. Yeah. <laughs> Last night at dinner, Quail Lodge. We got to get into this place. It's fucking fantastic. Never seen anything like Beautiful. this place. Beautiful. Down in the valley. Down in the valley. Is it down in the valley? Down in the valley, 25 to 30 minutes away from Pebble Beach. This is the place to come to. If you're in this area, you're looking to golf, you're, you're heading out to California, you need to, a place to stay, you're not going to believe the amenities here, the restaurant here, the golf here, the hotel rooms are top notch, and the views here are like... Yeah, Pebble Beach, I love all those views. I love the ocean. These are they're, these are incredible views in their own way. You've got the valley, the mountains, the, every, the way that the course Jurassic goes through. Park it's Jurassic Park, -esque, Jurassic Park esque, and you have to make this a destination now. You have to make 
quail at destination four play code four play too you get 20 percent off you go Which to the crazy uh, you go to the website i think it's uh, uh march through june march through june oh june? march through june you're gonna march get 20 percent off a place that we're telling you is off the charts good all eight of us eight yeah, people pure. that played golf could not believe how good no, this place great was. bunkers they got a place cool. with pure greens roll yeah, the bunkering was great actually. great they had some really cool I love the, the, look of the, bunker. the driving the, um, range everything yeah they got a great green. uh little putting course too that we're gonna uh, uh check out this afternoon mm -hmm. which so they you know they got the lodging and all that it's just the excellent spot to come i think it's the stay and play package you go to quail lodge um dot com code is four play one word f-o-r-e-p-l-a-y and you can get 20 percent off um now through june so or march through june so go check that out and again this place was you know i tweeted out because we were we were trying to basically parlay our little dad bot classic trip into um let's let's play these guys let's play the bob does sports guys and so i just tweeted out and this place was the number one recommended spot by far shout out to our dude bobby who set the whole thing up mm -hmm. who's sitting here listening to his podcast which is I think he's kind of just overseeing and make sure we at us. plug this place, which is fine. I don't play, it's a smart move. I don't blame that at big all. Big guy, too. We're going to plug it. Yeah. He's a big Barstool yeah, fan. Could you could tell because uh, I had sure. um, gummy clusters in my room, oh, dude. which are just not are to you be you bringing believed. those for the drive? <laughs> I've got them in my bag, yeah. Thank God. They are insane. We're going to need some sugar to keep the energy up oh on this God. ride. They're insane. So they're and just, those things need to be in the center console between us so we can just pick it up. 20% off. It's just something to think about. I'm telling you guys, just come check it out. It's it's This is not uh, this is not us trying to sell you on anything. All eight of us, who, well, four of us just got back from playing. Three, uh, I'm all over the place. Three of us just got them from playing You're Pebble never Beach, like Spanish Bay, and Spyglass, and we stepped up to this fucking golf course, and we said, "Holy shit, this place is nice." So yeah, that's just supposed to show you. Like, and it's, also, if you're staying there currently, I think you can play this place without staying here. Is that correct? Which is awesome. So if you are at Pebble, it is. It's a 20 minute drive because I came yep. from there this morning. Add it to the list. Literally, just add it to the list. Day in or day out, little brief. Fucking fat Perez, man. This video is going to be insane. He like, just doesn't miss a golf ball. The He's, chirping that was going on too, where you just were, everyone's feeding everybody. Yeah. Um, it, it was relentless. It was absolutely relentless. And then when you're around Bob, though, he's just so positive Bobby Fairways too. was not putty or was not hitting fairways. He just made every putt possible. Yeah, he he wasn't hitting as many fairways, but he's just so positive. Like you almost were rooting for them. Yeah, you know what I mean. We were in like a match to the death. And at the end, you're like, show me something, Bob. That's just the way he is. Because he goes like, can we have a day, Frank? He comes up to me just <laughs> the way that he speaks. People are gonna love him. We're mm -hmm. just. If you haven't seen them yet, we've just introduced you guys to a cast of characters that you're not going to you're not going to be able to miss one of their videos when they put one out. That's I think there's just are. a ton of I think a lot of people that listen to this are overlap followers of them for yeah, sure. Definitely. Like pretty much I mean I follow those guys, yeah. they follow us. Like my buddies know them, you know, yeah. it, there's a lot, you know, He's we're in all waves. this golf space and yeah, Bobby Fairways that he does thought a great leaders job in the golf it. space. They're, yeah, we're thought leaders in the golf space. They are. Uh, I, yeah, I agree. If you're not overlapping as a follower, you should be now. Yeah, and and make sure you go, you know, follow them. And then that video when we put that out, people are going to love that. Um, that's a little collaboration. We don't we haven't done a ton of collaborations. No, no. Everyone always at, whenever I go live on YouTube or whatever, we get a bunch of tweets. They're like, "How come you're not doing more collaborations with all these golf um, brands?" And it's like at the end of the day, we we did this one because we are genuinely best. For, like I'm like really, we're really good buddies with these guys. They're down to earth <laughs> dudes, and I want to see them succeed. Like that that to me is like a really good collaboration where it just makes sense. Like there's no incentive to like try and get more views or like we just wanted to have a really good time right. and just like well, i want them to have like as great of a career as possible that's how good of a guy bob and joey and fat perez are and it's also there's golf overlap there too like you know yeah. we got good good and it's like these guys are all like like plus twos it's like that's not Someone's a video like, oh, play good good in a scramble could, like maybe no you know and then you're like all right like we're all in this thing together like maybe but these guys are like that's a genuine fit of how we work, approach the game skill of level of competition tight, it works huge. and like yeah if we play good good like all right we might as well go play a fucking like they're there's better than us if you get take four guys from that podcast or that video series whatever they like they're just gonna crush us like right we're not good golfers no, we're not never good. Not, we're never not, not hiding that fact every comment all on those things are like these guys sucks like, yeah, when have we said we didn't right <laughs> never played college Wait, when golf have we ever said never we played didn't? amateur golf Watch nobody on this podcast one has ever we played amateur competitive golf of any nature never Sorry, <laughs> dude. I played. Uh, I love it. Though. Also, like if you like, they're, they act, like people act like we're supposed to be that good. It's like if you're right. that good and you like didn't like, they just like oh, so they were like really good through like high school, college, and they just weren't good enough. So now right. like 
they're just like really good. I picked up golf on after it. college. We're it's both like just like in the that same that boat, just playing at like Quail Lodge. We're not on the fucking tour, so like, where? Right. Why do I have to be better? I don't right. know. We what? do like three to four hours of podcasting, and we talk about how bad we are at golf. Oh, why do so why do people be think that we're good, or that we? If think I'm better, good. what 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 does that do for me? Club championship. <laughs> if uh, yeah, yeah, you belong to a club. I don't know. Yeah. All right, so like they get the ball in quicker on their YouTube video than we do. I don't know. <laughs> it's like when you think about it, what whatever is, ball just goes in fast. Shooting right? a like a score at a golf course means nothing to anyone. Like nothing. It's just Unless about having like a good time. We put these tournament. videos right. out to show personality. You're gonna see Joey Cole cuts and his outrageous body, and him just being able to fucking Those swing that golf unreal. club a thousand miles an hour on his practice swing. It's like. It's just little things you can take away from these and you can bring them to your own buddies and be like, did you see Joey Colcutt's absolutely rip that fucking draw around the trees? And he's just, he, Joey Colcutt's is a specimen. He really is. Oh, they're a good group. Yeah, just like, like, you know, we all have our buddies and whatnot. You love they're going to play around of golf. It'll just be like, yeah, I'll go play another round with those guys. Like, and you they know, had if I'm in ca- LA, we're going to do some sort of like golf outing. It's, it just is what it is. They had their cameraman, Jet. <laughs> fill in and he was the most nervous person on the planet he didn't take a breath to the six hole nope and you could see it right on his face i mean he finally let out a collective just like breath he gasped <sighs> and he just yeah his he body came back needed to oxygen he was nervous and then jet, he actually hit it all right the jet man was nervous um he made me feel tense i think i need to get a massage just looking at him like he was my my shoulder <laughs> he's got, got a tense, tense face already he was very tense i don't know how bob deals with that like he's like because bob is so even keeled everything's zen and then you got this guy jet who's like what the fuck, dude? He's like Jet's a sweetheart, cheating. though. He's, he's a real the nicest guy right. on the he planet. He just wants to do the right thing. But he's fucking tense. Yeah, because I think <laughs> he nervous. also cares about Bob's videos. He's nervous. So then he just wants to make sure that the videos are right. And you know, yeah, he didn't. He didn't take a breath in the six. We months. had Hannah Cook fill in for Trent today, so yep. that is a new addition to the four man scramble for this video. Um, we I think that it definitely made an impact on what happened. We won't. I'm, at this point, I guess we won't give away the ending because I don't think we tweeted it or anything, unless Bob did. But uh, we'll save it for the video coming in a couple weeks. Miss T's game. We missed T's game for sure. Hannah definitely did. What we she missed had his to putting. Do. Trent's a good putter. Yeah, she was tough on the greens, but I mean, I, we took two of her or three of her like tee shots at some point. I mean, she can hit it. She can hit the ball yeah. really far. Yeah, she outdrove Bob multiple times. Yep. So I mean, uh, yeah, we missed Trent just for you know that's our guy, but um, you know, valiant effort from Hannah to step in when she had to, and you know, it was a great match. It came down to the wire as it should. You know, we're all just. I love Trent. <laughs> I do love Trent so much. I miss Trent so much. It's crazy. <laughs> there will be a rematch with that. There has to be. Yeah, a with T. There has to be a rematch. That'll be the official. This was a warm up. This was a feeler fight. <sighs> People are going to get a sense for what happened in this video. And yeah, we're just not. You know, the four man scramble is going to have to get back to the drawing board. We're going to have to get to the locker room. We're, we're going to need a speech at some point from a coach. Like, we're also coming off a bender of a golf. We trip. are, but you know what? Like our heads weren't in it. Maybe no. from like hole three to hole ten, and like we need a speech. We need someone we to come in and throw a fucking Gatorade bottle across the locker room. Be like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Get your head out of your fucking asses. It's going to be impossible for people to figure out how this match went. We based fucking. On this. <laughs> <laughs> they have to really grind. Just out literally there. stopped him in his track. They're gonna have to really grind out there to to figure that out. How excited are you guys to? There you go. Jake bass. Throw something. Bass. At just threw a bottle. But nasty We're gonna. Bass. How excited are we to just stop doing this podcast and get and get get home? We're talking about red shoving in and out down my throat. Ooh. We're going to in and out. Nice. We're gonna red eye. Red eye back home. I don't stay in the night here at Quail Lodge. Yeah, I'm gonna stay. Fly back to uh, Scottsdale in the morning. Dude, it's been the difference in what your week's looking like. And my, I told Frankie, I think he started crying. I don't care anymore. I don't care about (laughs) what your schedule is right now. I just, I just got to get home. I'm so sunburnt. It's crazy. Mm. This is the end of a. This is the end of a Bender golf trip. That's what you guys are listening to right now. And we have two really good interviews. So stay up. Oh my god, you guys are gonna love Rocco Mediate. It's crazy how good that guy is. I mean, please stay along for this for this interview i know some people don't love interviews some people love interviews this one's a really good one he's really really good and you can go back and watch everything he talks about he walks us through every shot that we ever wanted to know about rock yeah. what was going on in his head he walks us through shot by shot awesome dude him talking about like the 15th hole at tory when they had the playoff and how he didn't even know where tiger was amazing like i literally he hit his t off the plant i didn't even know where he was when he was <laughs> i just heard a golf <laughs> shot he said it was so funny <laughs> it was unreal. i didn't even know where it was <laughs> <laughs> so good. I want it now. I want it right now. <laughs> no, I want it right now. I want Tiger Woods playing golf now. No, no, no. I want it right now. <laughs> what are you um, nuts? 
So we get a couple of interviews. We're going to throw it to these interviews. I don't think I missed anything else, right? I think we kind of we probably missed a lot. Scraped of stuff, our way through that. It is what it is. We'll be kind of recharged in Thursday show. You know, yeah. we're bring all the Rory heat. McElroy tonight will be in the chat 9 p.m. Yep. Go subscribe to the YouTube page. Sorry. At some point, oh by the way, we have a check for the first tee program that we're going to be giving out maybe this week, Incredible. maybe next week. It gets in on Wednesday. We have a big check. We're just going to bring it to. Are oh, you doing tee. big check thing? I don't. They like don't Happy know. Gilmore. Let me tell. Let me tell you something. First tee has no idea this is coming. How much am I allowed to say? We're, we're giving ten thousand dollars to the first team. Come program. on, woo! Raised from, um, we're getting a clap over here from Bobby. We we raised it Bobby from Quayle the first. We we, we raised it by doing a hole in one challenge um, on YouTube. Trent and I just played until we made a hole in one. Nine hours. Nine hours. Took you nine forever. and a half hours. Yep. Took Trent only three and a half. Took me nine. Did and you half feel hours. guilty making Trent? Stay I there told him he could leave. We said we were going to leave after one person made it, and if we got to two hundred thousand followers while we were live, then we'd both have to make it. But once Trent made it, I could not not make it. It was yeah, you can't. What are you going to end it? Like, yeah, okay, I right, just thanks, didn't. Thanks, Trent. I just don't get to do the challenge, and I did it, and I really regret it for the, the next six hours. Mm -hmm. But ten thousand dollars, we're bump. I think it ended up being like six thousand or seven thousand. We're bumping it up to ten. We're putting in our own funds into it. Um, ten thousand. They have no idea it's coming, so we're gonna. I guess. I mean, you know a lot about the four the first T program, and. Um, Bob? Can I just go to one and just hand them a check? Like they accept just like They'll donations. Accept yeah, it's all, it's all local. Right. There's one literally just like near my town, which I might just go yeah. and just give it to them, and they just they like, accept it. It's amazing the work they do, and like all the communities, and they go into it's amazing. They're just gonna, they're gonna be like what? We heard it's gonna get like fifty to sixty junior sets of clubs I mean, that's, that's how much fantastic. that's that's 60 new people learning the game of golf getting involved in the community learning all the stuff that comes with this game patience and the competition it's fucking awesome what they do for kids and the development of kids in the neighborhood um so yeah we're excited yeah i guess we're just gonna we're gonna knock on the door just hand them a ten thousand dollar check that will happen next week that's so awesome yeah great cool. work boys yeah uh all right well we're gonna throw it to these two interviews uh when it comes to men's underwear tommy john's hammock pouch underwear is the full package deal look tommy john i don't oh, i got a little so ad good. prompt here i don't need to talk about that god tommy john is literally the only underwear that i wear to the point where and i think i said this a couple months ago i mean i spent i probably spent 250 bucks or something on all underwear from tommy john and we get this for free if we really email i need this stuff so badly that I was like, no, I'm just going to buy the best stuff in the world at Tommy John's because I'm on the road a lot. We do trips mm -hmm. like this, seven, eight days on the road. You need, what, 15 pair of, of good boxers, boxer shorts, briefs, whatever you're rocking to get through all that. Makes your junk look nice. They do a great job with the pocket. There's something about it. Yeah. You walk by the, you walk by that nice big uh, mirror that you might have somewhere, whether it's in your bathroom mm -hmm. or in your room. You're like, whoa, I got a little something going on there. And then Ooh. It's it's as good as it'll look. You know what I mean? If that makes any sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You I look think better with underwear on. Is for what you're sure. Saying. It's as good as it'll look. And there's certain different. I've noticed that because they've sent so many things, and I've ended up getting so many because I've ran out, and I just didn't want to do. Like I remember once we were going on a trip, I ran out of clean ones. I just went and like I I literally ordered. Knowing that I was going to be traveling so much, I ordered more to where our hotel was going to be. You don't have freshies. That's how. Smart. That's how much I need Tommy John. Yeah. And, I, and it's just they're amazing, but they have different lengths. The longer ones feel athletic. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I wear those for hockey, and I'm just like, man, I feel like I'm wearing something mm -hmm. right now. I'm wearing armor. And then there's shorter ones if you're trying to get a little frisky. It's fucking mm. awesome, man. They. They've got the greatest underwear of all time. But, yeah, it's as good as you'll ever look. You can get 20% off your first order right now at TommyJohn.com slash four. That is TommyJohn.com slash four today for 20% off. Um, best $200, $250 I spent. Uh, mm -hmm. Just having the best underwear, having the best boxers, your junk looking, you know, as good as it can look in it. Yep. All those things are positive. So TommyJohn.com uh, slash four, and you get 20% uh, off. All right, we've got Rocco Media, and we've got David Faraday. We'll see you guys on Thursday. Um, Players' Championship will be kicking off, which is uh, uh, one of the biggest tournaments of the year, obviously. Um, so it's a good week for golf. Congratulations to Tiger Woods yep. being inducted into the World Golf Hall of Fame. Um, hit it hard. Hit it hard. Hit it hard. All right, folks. We are joined, uh, man, I don't know, fifth, sixth time it might be at this point, um, by one of our favorite people in the world of golf, one of the funniest people in the world of golf, David Faraday, live from, uh, from Florida, the Florida Swing. Uh, when we put this show out, it's obviously a very big week for you. It was just announced recently that you will be um, hosting the World Golf Hall of Fame induction ceremony uh, Wednesday night. 
uh, pretty big name. So I have a question. Do you get um, do you get nervous for anything like that? Yeah, I, I do. I get nervous um, every time I go on TV. <laughs> you know, that's just the, the nature of the beast. <clears throat> um, I, I do. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'll be pretty terrified. <laughs> so it'll be live on Golf Channel, 7 p.m. Um, Eastern time. It's um, obviously a very big name with Tiger Woods, but um, for... For I mean anybody who gets um, inducted into the World Golf Hall of Fame is going to be a big name, have an incredible resume. Um, you got Susie Maxwell Baring, you got Tiger Woods, you got Tim Fincham, you got Marion Holland, so all kinds of um, different backgrounds. But um, you know, ha for for your your prep work for this, I mean, are you um, you know do you pretty much know what you want to say going in, or are you kind of grinding for for weeks? Well, how does that work? I, I, I've been writing uh, little bits and pieces and, you know, that we've got writers at PGA tour and, and, uh, it'll be, uh, on a prompter, uh, in the very back of the room. Um, so, I mean, it, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, preparation for tiger. I, I don't really have any other than 20 years or 25 years of walking around with them, watching them do incredible things, making me look like an idiot. I can do it by myself. <laughs> uh, that's that, you... the prep for like a best man speech. Like you've just been watching Tiger for so long that you can either go in with a plan and you can write everything down, which is almost yeah. impossible to do, or you can just kind of speak from the heart and that might be the best way to go. Well, I, I'm thinking Ricky Gervais at the Oscars, you know? Beautiful. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh Tiger, so, you know, obviously Tiger's records are outrageous. We've talked about it quite a bit on here. When you are walking around inside the ropes with Tiger, what's he what's he like? I mean, does it change day to day? Does he have any interaction with you out there? What kind of interaction does he have? You know, in, in the early days, we, we had a lot of fun. Um, you know, we would do little skits, you know, for the, the late night show with McCord. And, and, you know, Tiger participated in a few of them. But he kind of... You know, that, that sort of wore off him. I think we, we wore it off him, uh, you know, the media following him everywhere. Uh, you know, I, I, but, I mean, he's still good company on the golf course. Out of all the um, the records, I mean, Tiger Woods records, he's got uh, 82 wins, 15 majors. He won the three straight U.S. Amateurs, 142 consecutive cuts made. Is there any particular record to you that sort of jumps out Um as as one to focus on or one that's most impressive the the cuts made 142 might it might never be broken um you know as long as they play the game uh, it's an incredible record uh 142 times you're playing 150 people or more you know and uh hell you know what I mean? it's just it's, it's an unthinkable record yeah and you when you look at the you know when when somebody makes uh 15 or 18 in a row it starts to yeah. you start to think wow it's really impressive in there yeah he made 142 straight um you've been a big uh I, you know i remember when we first had you on god it was probably 2017 or so and the the you know the 2018 2019 tiger comeback hadn't started yet <clears throat> and i remember every time we've had you on even back then you were always a diehard tiger supporter yeah and believer and you know a lot of times we felt a little bit alone in that space and they would have you on and be like yes david is our guy he would you know yeah. you would always say if he can get healthy there's no way he won't win again so now um we're at you know yet another point where tiger's starting to drop a little bit of hints he said he will play on the pga tour this year what's your confidence level in um a post car accident tiger woods coming back and playing well um i i still have no doubt um uh, you know, we've just seen Phil win at 50. He won the PGA Championship. And we know that Tiger's better than Phil. Uh, you know, he's in better shape. Uh, you know, so uh, I see no reason why he, he couldn't compete and win again. Yeah, I think um, I think that's pretty much our our belief as well. Um, you know, you've been around so many guys and, and, and impressive men, women in the game of golf. What, what do you think it is having witnessed Tiger for 25 years now? I mean, I, we've all kind of um, beat it pretty good in terms of the, you know, the mental toughness, the physical gifts that he has, how hard he works. You know, I, 
he's going to come back in, in his mid high 40s and he's going to have been through so many different injuries and all that yet we all still believe in him what do you think what do you think really makes him that much different than somebody else Boy, oh, yeah. you know, he's he's always been so different. I think, you know, from the Mike Douglas show at two years old, he went from there to golf. He went from, uh, you know, uh, kindergarten to golf, to high school to golf, to Stanford. He was the geeky kid that, with the big glasses that couldn't get laid. Well, we fixed that, you know. Um, but, you know, it, it's just been golf the whole the whole time that he's been on the planet. And he's been here so 40-something years now. And I, I've never seen anybody with the kind of unbreakable focus that, that he had. Um, you know, when, when he got something in his mind, you know, that, that was it. He was going to make that putt or he was going to hit that shot, get, get a, you know, and make it come off. Um, I never saw anybody like that. Not close. Is there any part of you that thinks when you're watching another comeback happen after the, the latest accident, that like why like what you don't owe us anything i obviously doing it for himself he's got all the records in the world he's got all the money in the world like why put yourself through it again have you ever gotten any insight into that like what's his motivation at this point in the game well obviously it's not it's not money it's i mean he loves he loves the game he, he genuinely loves it you know and the, the competition and but we had jack on yesterday uh, uh, on our show and and uh, he was saying, you know, the, he never liked to sleep on a big lead. He, he liked to be in close. And, uh, you know, Tiger's the exact opposite. You know, he won a U.S. Open by 15. I mean, he, and he, he won a, uh, an Open by 12 and 8 and Masters by 12. And, you, you know, I mean, it was just, uh, it was a ridiculous thing to watch. He didn't, he didn't want to just win. He wanted to trample all over everybody. Yeah, it's such a – it's, you know, watching those clips from the U.S. Open when he did win by 15, you know, he had that uh, inner goal on the final round to not make a bogey and watching his eyes when he made a couple big par putts. It's like, man, you're going to win your first U.S. Open. You're going to win it by a million shots. It's at Pebble Beach. It's beautiful out. And instead of, you know, having sort of all these smiles on his face and waving, he's walking around like uh, – um, you know, an absolute savage who doesn't want anyone to get a stroke closer yeah. than they currently are. And it's, you know, we talk all the time about how, yes, golf's in a, in a great spot with a lot of these new stars. Morikawa's got a little bit of Tiger in him. Spieth is unbelievably exciting. Rory might be the best person in all of golf. Um, mm -hmm. But Tiger is just so much more magnetic than anyone else. And we try to, I guess, figure out why sometimes. I mean, I guess, I guess that's it. I guess it's that killer instinct yeah. that he has. Is he moves the needle, and uh, you know, he moves the needle like no one else in, in history. Yeah, and and you know, there's the inevitable question. Uh, you know, who's the greatest golfer of all time? Well, I, I've talked to Jack about this. You know, and, and he says, yeah, no one has ever played golf like Tiger Woods. Yeah, and uh, but Jack is the greatest champion. And he has 18 of them. You know, uh, but Tiger Woods is the greatest player that has ever lived. Yeah, I think that's been sort of where I've fallen on it as well. And people love to debate it, obviously. And if you turn on ESPN, it's uh, MJ and LeBron debates nonstop. If you're a golfer, it's going to be Tiger and Jack. Yeah. And I, I think that's right. I think Tiger played the greatest golf that there's ever been played, that stretch in 2000 um, and the, even the years around it. And then he kind of when he came back in 2006, 2007, 2008, how good he was was unbelievable. Um, but longevity matters. I mean, you know, if you look at yeah. – Look at like Tom Brady, but then I look at you know somebody like Tom Brady that gives me a little bit of more hope for Tiger Woods to come back and and win yeah, some more. You think Tiger's going to play in the Masters? I think he is. Um, you know, I, I I don't know that he can resist the the temptation of uh, you know, and we saw him at the father son of PNC, and uh, he was walking just fine. And uh, I I know Augusta is a it's a physical golf course, you know, there's a lot of slopes, a lot of big hills on it, but uh, I, I think he's ready. I, I don't see why he wouldn't play, really, to be honest. Yeah, that's kind of what we were debating as well. It's like if he says he's going to play, you know, maybe only a handful of events a year or so, Augusta National has got to be one of them. I mean, I feel like the guy could show up with, uh, you know, another broken leg, a broken arm, and, and contend at Augusta National. Yeah, well, I mean, he's won a U.S. Open with a broken leg already. <clears throat> 
<laughs> How much is nuance important at Augusta National? We hear about it all the time and, and you know, the local knowledge, the experience. How important is that really as someone who's, you know, walked those grounds year after year? Uh, well, it, it is, uh, you know, the, the greens are so complicated and they change slightly every year. Um, you know, some of the changes they make to uh, Augusta, they don't, uh, they don't publicize. And if, if you go to Google Earth, and uh, you know how you can uh, picture your, uh, you can get a picture, a current picture of your own home? Yeah. Mm -hmm. On Google Earth. Well, if you try Google Earth on Augusta National and you'll get a pixelated image. Uh, they control the satellite. So, uh, you know, you can't tell what they're doing or, or what they've been up to during the winter. You know, they do a lot of this kind of under the under the cover. So, yeah, nuance and, and uh, local knowledge is huge at Augusta. That's why you see so, so few first-time winners. Yeah, I, uh, I remember reading a few years ago that, you know, and it's a little different now because the information age and it's hard to really – truly conceal information but back um you know in the in the 90s or so um they talk about how guys would show up to augusta for the masters and the yardage on the t marker wouldn't say anything different but they'd stand there and hit a ball that would go into a bunker they used to be able to fly and they'd be like yeah. this is just a longer hole now <laughs> they just made the hole longer exactly and there's no evidence of the work either <laughs> it's like a perfect crime scene there's nothing left they're, they're so good at it uh, so this year they've, um, the, you know, they did announce that I believe the 15th hole um, is 20 or 30 yards longer. Um, just curious kind of what you think about some of the changes, um, you know, that, that maybe they did make, maybe they didn't. Some, some people have been talking for, it feels like, decades now about they should lengthen 13. Do you, do you like kind of the idea of all these changes or do you kind of part of your hope it would just kind of remain Augusta National and whatever they shoot, they shoot? Well, it's been a living, breathing kind of organism from the from its inception. You know, in the in the nineteen thirties, it's changed every year. You know, it's, uh, some little way or another. Sometimes in bigger ways. You know, it'll change, but it's a constantly changing thing. Personally, I I wouldn't like to see it change much more. It's like taking a Chippendale chair, something that's perfect, and like sawing the the legs off to make it you know lower. I'm I'm with you. I, you know, I I mean, we all debated a little bit, and and I think the the biggest reason is for score. Nobody wants to see, for whatever reason, we don't want to see you know twenty twenty five under par. Um, yet a part of me then thinks like, who cares? Why you know why yeah. why does it matter what they shoot to par? No, I, uh, it doesn't. Uh, you know, it's not an insult to the course. It's a compliment to the player. Uh, you, you know, when they shoot low. They're so good these days. Uh, you know, the, the game has taken such a quantum leap from, from the time that I played in, which is only less than 30 years ago. Um, but they're so good uh, that, uh, you know, they can make golf courses as difficult as they want. They're still going to shoot low. Yeah, I, uh, I, Kyle Porter from CBS had a good tweet yesterday because everybody, um, you know, goes, goes crazy over the Honda Classic and how tough it plays. Um, and he just tweeted out that PJ National is uh, uh, always famed for how tough it is when the reality is the scoring average at last week's course, Riviera, and this week's is almost identical at 71.53 to 71.52 over the last 15 years. We are very emotionally affected by score to par. Um, so I think that's really – it's an interesting tidbit into, you know, we do sort of look at a place and be like, oh, they're just lighting this place up. That's not – you know that exciting it's not like a major championship when in reality if you just kind of change bar it doesn't it doesn't yeah. really change that much no it doesn't i agree with you um well with um you know the rest of the the springtime leading up to um to the masters you know what's kind of this swing the florida swing what's this like for you is it pretty hectic yeah, it is. I've got six weeks in a row uh, now, and I'm, I'm actually planning to stay out. I've got enough supplies for four weeks <laughs> <laughs> in my backpack and, and stuff. I actually checked a bag in for the first time in years. Uh, this because uh, I have a feeling I may be out on the road for for about a month. There's two in Texas after it, so that's not so bad. So you do all these trips on the road. You try never to ch have to check a bag? Yes, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I went to Australia with no check bag. I went to what? Japan with no check bag. Wow. How do you go to Australia with no check bag? 
Well, um, I, I've got a full size, uh, you know, that goes in the overhead and I can put in, you know, four vests, 10 shirts, four pairs of jeans, underwear, socks, and I tra travel in a sport. You know, I really don't need much more. I do laundry, you know, at the that's, hotel. That's the move on the road is, is something that I haven't done as, as much of or as much as I should have is laundry on the road because then you can be out there forever if you want. Yeah, you can. If you don't mind paying, you know, eight bucks for a pair of socks. The prices are outrageous. That's true. Yeah. That's better yeah. than che checking a bag. Though. It must have, man, that must have hurt you to check that bag then if you're just going it over did. to Florida. It did. And it's lying here. And, the, you know, the contents of my emotional suitcase are usually spread around the country anyway. <laughs> but um, this one, uh, this one looks like, well, it's, it's catastrophic. <laughs> yeah. Looks like a hand grenade um, up at, at, at uh, Nordstrom. <laughs> well, look, uh, good luck. Good. I know it's a it's a hectic stretch. Um, uh, everybody's gonna be tuning in for the for the uh, World Golf Hall of Fame um, induction ceremony. So um, some big names: Tiger Woods, obviously, probably the the person we talk about on this show ten times more than anybody else. So um, we'll be watching. We appreciate the time. I know it's a little bit early, and um, hopefully, we'll get you back on soon. Anytime, boys. Anytime. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Thank you, David. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. We'll talk to you soon, I hope. Yep. Yes, sir. Have a good, good one. Yep. Good luck. Relationships take work. A lot of us will drop anything to uh, to go help someone we care about. We'll go out of our way to treat other people well. But how often do we give ourselves the same treat, gentlemen? Not well, often. Got to work on the brain. Not enough. It's so complex. There's so much going on. It's such an important part of your body. You just don't think about Probably it. Probably the most important. We think about everything physical. Oh, we need a nose job. We need a chin tuck. We've been thinking a, about that. We need a belly tuck. Need we need all these things. Dude, we need like help on our brain, man. The stuff that you can't see. <laughs> What's going on between these ears when I rest my head on the pillow? What, how do I figure that out? Well, this month, BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you, Frankie, and everyone else listening, to take care of uh, your most important relationship, the one you have with yourself. See what I'm saying? This is crazy. That's spot on, really. This is what we need, You almost man. wrote this ad copy. This is off. what we need. You didn't even have this in front of you. I have nothing in front of me. Uh, whether it's hitting the gym, making time for your haircut, or even trying therapy, you are your greatest asset. So invest the time and effort into yourself like you do for other people. Um, BetterHelp is just awesome. They're such a good... Um, uh, uh, service, such a good cause, um, such good work helping people improve themselves, um, their mental state, their emotional state, and really just working on yourself. That's why um, BetterHelp is doing such a good job. BetterHelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash four, our podcast, Four Play Golf Podcast, that's what you're listening to, is sponsored by BetterHelp, and our listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp dot com slash four give it a try see why over two million people have used better help online therapy including uh, our office that's right they've made themselves completely available to everyone at this office everyone's i mean if you're not using better help at this point you, you're like the outlier because they everyone has given it a chance and then now they just they are such a valuable asset to have to just any time that you need it anytime you need to give them a call they're there for you professionals it makes a huge difference 10% off. You go to betterhelp.com slash four. So we got uh, Rocco Mediate. Uh, we're here at the Colgard Classic. What, um, what, are, what, is these, what are these weeks like for you? I mean, we had um, Jerry Kelly earlier. We talked about kind of champions, uh, PGA Tour champions mm -hmm. life. It seems nice out here. It's the same as a regular tour, basically. We're playing against the same guys, same type of golf courses, same competition. It's like we never stopped. The, I, like I played 27 straight in the regular tour. This is my 10th on this one, so nothing stopped for me since I was 21 and a half. Do you like that? I love it. I love it. I've never had a job. Do you like being on the road? Um, well, I have a six-year-old, almost seven actually, um, now. So it, that's been the worst part of our job. Anybody that travels like that, not just us, but it's the worst part because you leave. Like my little one said, do you have to go, Papa? I'm like, yeah, I do. I have to go work. Yeah, in that age, they can't really just leave yeah. and take off school and be gone. No, sometimes they'll, they'll, they'll come out, but she's in first grade, so she's loving it. It's hilarious with the little cute Catholic little plaid. It just kills, me. Do, kills you, me. do you try to come up with, like, BS excuses to be like, oh, yeah, she just needs to come on the road for a week? Oh, she'll, she'll, oh they do. They do. It's just now it's – they're up in Minnesota right now, so it's not not very nice. It's they're trying to get out of snowy. there whenever they can. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, what do you What do you do on the road? What do you like to do? Are you a big restaurant guy? Are you a foodie? What yeah, do you it like depends. To I used to be a more of a foodie now, but uh, than I am now. But um, yeah, I just you know I'm usually when I'm by myself, I'll spend a lot of time working out here because I have time. You know, uh, when they're with me on the road, I don't I don't, ha- I don't use as that, you know as much time. But not when I'm out by myself, I work because mm-hmm. as you see, the competition here is silly. Yeah. Um, and God, everyone says, crazy. well, is it easier? No, it's not easy. We're playing against the same guys. And chances are the guys that kicked your ass on the regular tour kind of kick your ass out here. Yeah. But you still want to try to you know, stay, stay relevant, I guess you would say, especially as a player. Um, that, that's the key. I still love it. So, so this, you, you mentioned it's been um, you know, many years, several decades you've been playing professional <laughs> golf. Are you, how, how do you, how do you find something new? Do you still find something new? Oh God, new? yeah, all the time. You're always trying to get better somehow. I know what I'm doing. I, I know how to do it and what causes good and bad. I mean, that's the whole key. It's, it, it's good to know what causes bad. And like, that's, so we're always learning. I'm always trying new shots. You say, you know, you know, those answers more so than you did. You oh know. God, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I should. And, you know, everyone says, well, how do you guys still play so well? I'm like, well, we should be better just a little older. I mean, so it's just because, you know, we never talked about like the kids on the PGA tour, which I love watching the kids. Um, we never talked about distance when we played ever. We knew Freddie hit it seven miles. Davis hit it eight miles. Dan Pohl back in the day hit it. We didn't care though. Everyone say, well, how far my buddies, how far do you hit it? I would say far enough yeah. for a hot, for two, almost 30 years. So it, it but it's changed. Like every sport's changed. What sport hasn't gotten bigger, faster, stronger? Yeah, everyone. All of them. Now golf is, and people are losing their minds. But it's interesting to see what the numbers these bo- these these kids are producing. You think it's a problem at all? Um, no, I, I don't. It, it, you know, the ball's been stopped. The driver speed's been stopped. Um, the only way you protect it is how you set the golf course up. Yeah. That's the only way you protect it. But then again, you go look what Bryson did at wing foot. Yeah. Can't protect it. Isn't that, that's okay, right? If it's someone just figures out a way to do it, they yeah. just do it. Yeah, you know, why would you get mad at somebody that's trying to control his ball from 350 yards? It's never been done before, but he's close. Right. Um, and there's several guys that are doing that. So what, what's the deal? Oh, the game is, ob- it's really not obsolete. If you look at the scoring average, I, I haven't looked, but I'm guessing it's not much lower than it was 30 years ago. I know, not much. I know Brandel's done a good amount of stats on that. Of yeah, how so he's probably said that. It, uh, if people, it has not changed no. it, it, like people would think. No, you'd think it's three shots lower. It may be like a half shot It's almost here. identical. Or, yes, so that tells you a story. Um, yeah, it's interesting because, you know, we've, we've had that stance a lot too. That it, let people hit it really far. If they've figured What's, out ways there. Right. You know, Bryson changed his whole body. He's, he, he found a way to control his swing still and still and then hit it you know, significantly farther, like that's impressive. And that's just, you're evolving the game. That's going to happen. That's always happened. I mean, guys in the fifties were hitting it longer than guys well, in the thirties. Right. Well, look at the, the football player sizes now. Oh, right. You remember Jack Lambert for the, my, for the Steelers. Yeah. I, I come from Pittsburgh. So we're at South, outside of Pittsburgh. He was like maybe six foot tall at the most. And he was brutal. Now they're nine feet tall though. It's, it's a whole different, whole different deal. But I, I like what's happened. Um, you know, Bryson's been getting bar- obviously gets barbecued all the time because I think it's just jealousy. You know, oh, what's he doing that for? Well, look at the stats. You know, he's pretty much controlling that that golf ball. It's ridiculous uh, carry numbers, ridiculous in ball speeds. That's a talent. And what else is a talent is playing out of the rough. Right. You, you saw that at Wingfoot. Um, mm-hmm. And not, I'm not just talking Bryson. A lot of the guys. But then you look at those guys like Bryce and Rory, the guys who did 74 miles, they have no corridors to play from. Guys that did it, you know, back in our day, 270, 280 yards, the fairways are huge compared to where they're hitting it. So now it becomes harder. So you look at guys that, well, the fairway percentage is 48%. Well, there's no fairways up there. So they got to learn to play out of the rough. Now, if they hit it in the fairway that far, you know, when DJ was playing his best, he was driving it right up the middle, 330. Can't beat that. You, you can't, and you shouldn't be able to. Yeah, and their calculation is that they're going to be better with a wedge from the rough, you know, than they are. Yeah, I never bought into that until I started looking at it a little closer. I'm yeah. like, wait a second. So if I'm in the fairway with an eight iron, and you're in the rough with a wedge, and, and if, if I was on the regular tour, if I'm in the fairway with a six iron, and they're in the rough with a wedge, <laughs> I'm going to have a hard time beating them, you know, having three, four clubs more. I get it. I get it. You know, and I never, I was like, that's ridiculous. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard, but it's actually true. 
You just looked at stats. You just decided to dive into stats. No, I just looked at why. What's the strokes gain? You know, strokes gained off yeah. the tee isn't fairways hit. It's proximity. It's it's how far from the hole you are on your next shot, basically, right? And in, in our in our world, back in the day when we did have rough on the on the regular tour, you you weren't allowed to miss fairways. You can play anything from from the rough. Now it's you're hitting shorter clubs because they hit it further. So there's your the whole difference. Yeah. If you put them all in the rough with six irons, it's not going to work. Right, right, right. <laughs> Have you ever um, had an incident in your game where you thought you were, you know, really needed to work on something and then looked at stats and it turned out to be different than you thought because? No, I, I never paid attention. I mean, I paid attention to, you know, it, Brandel made a comment a few weeks ago that I was shocked at because I always felt this. Um, he said, a lot of people think you have to be a great putter to play in the PGA Tour for a long time. And he goes, that is not true. And I'm, my eyes lit up. I was watching a golf show and I went, oh, what's he coming with? You have to be a great striker to survive. And I've always said a great striker will outperform a great putter in a career every single time mm -hmm. because he has more chances. Right. And Brandel's one of the few people that ever, I, I looked, I, I remember I texted Rich Lerner when I was watching. Yeah. I said, Richie, that was unbelievable. I can't believe he said that. Finally, someone gets it. Now, the guys who have both, there's a couple of them. One's named Tiger, mm -hmm. one's named Jack, Watson. All those guys, they had all that, you know, but Tiger and Jack were the, pretty much the best strikers and the best putters. There, there, there comes your greatness. Trevino, great putter, reasonable putter, great striker, became a great one. Now, the guys that get all of it become that. The guys that don't become us. <laughs> <laughs> What's the biggest? Us is not bad. Us is not bad. No, Are us you is kidding good. me? I, I liked. I loved my whole. I liked all these years out here. I, I've, I've, I've had the absolute blast. What's the biggest part of your game or difference in your game from twenty years ago till now? I'm a better pitcher and from hundred yards in. Mr. Trevino had a little to do with that. I got to spend some time with him in the. I'd say, 2009, 10, 11, 12. I'd go to over to. Um, oh, let me think. Where, where am I? Uh, Preston Trail when I, we were playing Colonial and spend half a day with him and it's just stupid how, how much he showed me this was the best wedge player that ever walked on grass period and he showed me a lot of cool things i've gotten i wish i was if i was as good around the greens as i am now and putting for that matter i think i'd have won a couple more a lot of guys go i'd have won 10 more events no i wouldn't have but i might have won a couple more um i i think that was the whole difference i think we can all probably say that but that's incredible because at that point in your life, you know, you've been playing golf for oh you know, 20, 30 years, mm -hmm. and yet here you find out what, what is he teaching you that you're. That's... Well, just what to, how to hit certain shots, curve, spin, all that stuff that yeah. he was a master at back, well, still is actually, um, especially back in his heyday. He, you, for, with a wedge in his hand, it was over. He had no chance. Right. Um, and I grew up in just outside of Pittsburgh and Greensburg, um, bent grass. Uh, I was always good at flopping, hitting funny shots, but he showed me the ones that look easier from fairways, pitches around the greens. We had a lot of fun there, but um, you, you just look at how that how it's all worked. That's still where Mike Taylor at Artisan Golf makes my wedges, and I wish I'd have known him 25 years ago, but he's doing it for three, four years now. And um, I said to Mike, and it, I said, you can improve the game technology-wise from one yard to now 350 yards. You can do better with irons from 220, 230, 240. But from 100 yards in, there ain't no fix. You got to know what you're doing, you know, with, with loft or whatever loft you use. And that's the whole, it can't be, you can't make it easy. You can make it easier off the tee, for sure. I can miss hit off the tee all day and hit in a fairway. Yep. But you can't miss hit from 100 or 110, whatever the heck. But you mm -hmm. know what I mean? From inside 100 yards, you got to know what's going on or you're right. going to lose. And, and that's that's going to be that like that forever. Yeah, because if you miss off the tee, a little left, a little right, you're not throwing away a shot. No, Probably, there's a good chance you make the same score. You can't. You can in the middle, or you at least can. Whereas if you, no. you know, you blade one a little bit or something going. Yeah, into I, I look at some of the wedges being built with all this stuff inside the wedge and this and that. I'm like, what? What's what good is that going to do me? With some, <laughs> I, I just no. I need to know how to do this with certain loft. I use it. My 56 degrees, the highest degree loft I use. I've never changed. Is that um, right? Never, never. You never considered it? No. I tried it once. Couldn't get it in the green. What do you mean couldn't Because get it? I've learned to use the face. I can I can get 85 degrees dynamic loft on a 56 degree No loft. problem. Yeah. It's a trick shot, but I can get 85 degrees <laughs> dynamic loft. So, And plus, what would I take out? I, mean, I still need my three iron. <laughs> right. I, I do. Um, so I, I've never really changed. I don't know if it would have made me better or 
better or worse, but when I tried it, it made me worse. So, I never so when you need to go air, though, you just open that. Got no up problem. Big yeah. time. No mm -hmm. problem. That's yeah. been what you've been doing forever. Mm -hmm. I remember around, I think it was probably 2019 Masters, I remember a clip went kind of viral, Tiger talking about how at Augusta, you have to, you know, cut your chips into certain pin, like oh, sure. literally your chips. You know, oh, yeah. Cut it's got to have certain spin on it. Other chips, which to an average guy, I mean, if we can just make pure contact. Right. Chip, I, and and he's right, that. though, because slopes and cutting it into a slope or hooking it into a slope from 20 yards, just right. getting a little bit of different spin is you have to, especially there um, on, on those on those green sites. The it's it's all trick shots are on there. <laughs> I think the most amazing thing for, you know, we're weekend golfers and we've gotten in the last four or five years a lot more access around big events and seeing the best players in the world up close is around the greens is shocking how good you guys are. Shocking. Yeah, you, and a lot of time, a lot of the stuff has to do with loft too. It's easier, to, I shouldn't say easier. It is. It's easier with the right loft, uh, with more loft on certain shots. But they were taught that way. The kids didn't, ha they, they went to 60, 62 to three degrees when they were 12. Right. Okay, I remember Tom Kite was our first guy with a 60 degree club. We're like, what the hell is that? You know, it looked like it hit you in the face if you made a, <laughs> if you made a swing. So, but it, 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 it's changed. You, you can't hold, it's like you go, well, those kids no, didn't have to use, well, that's because that they didn't have to use one. They had always had a 60 or something. That's just normal to them. So nothing wrong with it. Right. It's just, you know, like Watson never went to a 60. Seve never had a 60. Um, so the old school guys, use what we you know and we fi figured out how to use the balance all that stuff it's so funny because my my dad's you know mid 60s and been playing golf with his whole life and he's a bump and run guy i think yeah. all of our dads are probably bump and run guys yeah. he's always try to play it low and we were playing a couple years ago we we're at tpc colorado and it was shortly after they had the uh, corn fairy tour event there thick rough like brutal rough mm -hmm. and he all day was trying to hit this little pitching wedge from around the greens and he couldn't get it it's not gonna work. stop on the green or even to get through the rough and I was, Dad, now you got to play more loft. And he's like, I don't have that shot. So we finally showed him. He said, here's the sixth. You just open it up. Now take just your normal bump and run and swing. And it goes lower, up. And it plopped right up in the air. And then he gave me a club back. He goes, I hate that shot. I hate that shot. <laughs> Even though I hit it to a foot, it's awful. <laughs> I want to run it through the rough. But you see some guys uh, that won't pit. Like some guys will be 20 yards from, from the, you know, 15 yards off the green putting. A lot of times you'll hear people going, well, that's, what's he doing that for? Well, apparently he doesn't like to pitch. So why would you? You know what I mean? Use your what you have. I mean, I'm learning to putt and off certain lies where I would never have done that. And I, I my, my caddy said, you just need to leave the ego over there and just yeah. putt this through the garbage because if you miss the chip, you're just going to hit it again. That's so funny. yeah, putt from off. whatever. Right. Torino was a big a big strokes. proponent Tons. of that. Get it on the ground when you have to. Seriously. If it's a messy shot, get it because a, a crappy putt from a certain place is going to be way better than a crappy chip. Now are we no trying doubt. to get the ball? I in the still hole? hate it though. I hate it, but I still I trying do. Trying to get the ball in the hole. Though. Trying to get the ball. Yeah, in the hole. exactly. That's it. There's no pitchers. There probably will be someday, but there's no pitchers <laughs> yeah. now. Well, unfortunately, a lot of our games are on video, so <laughs> right, there you go. It is. But mm -hmm. I still pull out the putter. I love it. Yeah. Uh, Martin Kyber won the U.S. Open by at Pioneers 2014 by like nine shots. He putted everything. Yeah, everything. Yep. He, he I remember I, I had a good week there in 05 when 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 Michael Campbell yeah. won. I remember telling my caddy that week. I said to Brandon, I went, "Okay, if we miss a fairway." We're not going to try, unless it's an easy, you know what I mean? But that Bermuda grass was brutal. Mm -hmm. If we miss a fairway, we're going to lay it up short of the green somewhere, unless we can get it, unless we can get it there, which sometimes you could. And I, I had a good week that week, and I literally got it up and down a lot of times by just hitting it. If I hit in the rough, I pitched it up by the green, and I got it up and down. Instead of trying the hero shot, mm -hmm. hitting it in the worst place and making sixes. You go over those greens. Oh, my God. Those yeah, greens. so you have to play a certain way if you miss. But like I said, playing out of the rough is, is a – is a um, it's an art now because they live there because of the way that how far they hit it right and a lot of guys give him crap for oh he's missing he hit 40 percent of the fairways at wingfoot i'm like yeah but at his distance there are no fairways right there's right. no fairways he's just hitting it far and, oh, and i also straight. tell them this i said if you would have put me and not that they would but if you would have put me in bryson's where bryson hit his ball every day at wingfoot i got to play from his i got the free pass to the tournament you can play your second shot from all bryson's shots I'd have had to work to break 80 all four days. Because you're not used to playing out of the rough. Uh, but I can't hit it far enough out of the rough. Yeah. You know, he's 170 yards hitting a wedge up there around the green. Right. What am I going to do? I'm going to lay it up 30 yards short to pitch into those greens? No chance. No, yeah, you got no shot. There's an art to it, period. Yeah. He's figured that part out so far. 
So you picked up your social media game in the last. Well, I just started uh, you know, a year or so. Like October? No, not even just a year. In October? And, yeah, I got seventeen million. I mean, no, eighteen thousand. Sorry, I knew it was an eighteen <laughs> or something there. But um, um, it's fun. I, I do mostly. I try to help. I don't do many things that are like I, I don't know. I, I I just try to do some teaching stuff that I know, and then people seem to like it. People yeah. love that stuff. Yeah, yep. they seem to like it, and yeah. and if it helps, I'm happy. Yeah. But it's it's fun though. It's I I, I it's it's a lot of fun. It seems like things are good. You're out there. Like I, I said to you before the show, you got your barefoot a lot. You got right. stogie in your mouth. I mean, it feels like you're living life. That's, you know, I, I, I just, I enjoy what I do. I'm lucky to keep being able to do it. Being like a champion store is awesome. It's like a reward for all the years we played out there. And then trying to survive out here and stay as long as you can. I'm 59 now and I don't feel it. I feel my ball goes just as far as it did when I was a kid. So I'm not, not really that concerned about it. I haven't lost an inch. And, and, and distance wise, because but I never hit it far anyway. Yeah, I just hit it far enough, right. like we I mean, talked before. <laughs> far enough is that it's day. still far enough, so I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. I mean that'll get it done. Do you get? Um, do you care when people ask you about the 2008 US Open? Oh no, not at all. That was the most fun thing it? that ever happened. Yeah, that was so much fun. Well, we are, I would say, publicly probably the most you know pro Tiger podcast in the world. Right. So well, we've what, but why about wouldn't you be? What, what's what? Uh, he's. I've been a fan of his since he was a kid. I watched him play TPC when I lived there, and when he won the amateur, I'm like, oh boy, he's coming, <laughs> and he did. And it's it's he what did. he did for us is ridiculous. See, that's such a great attitude because I feel like oh my God. Some, another person in your position could have like a completely other. But why? But I agree. With jealousy. You. Um, yeah. He was, he was the best that ever played ever. Right. You can't admit this. I love playing with him because I want to try to beat him. Yes. How many times is that going to happen out of ten? Once. It happened a few times yeah. for me, um, and I remember them. No one else does, but I do. Yeah, the great ones do things that we didn't, and that's why they have multiple major championships, a zillion tournament wins. They asked me, um, Tom Rinaldi asked me. We did that interview before the Open. Yep. Um, I don't know what, ten, when it was a ten-year anniversary, I guess. Yeah. yeah. He said, "Do you consider yourself a great player?" And after I got done laughing, I went, "No." What do you mean, great player? He goes, "Well." What, what's a great player? I went, guys who win multiple majors and a zillion tournaments. I'm just a player. Mm-hmm. What if you'd have won the Open? Didn't I just say multiple majors? I'd have been a great player that week, but you wouldn't consider me a great player by any stretch, well, you no were matter I win or not. That week. You were a great yeah, player. Yeah, but I mean, what my point is there's difference. Greatness is a whole nother echelon, only a handful. You know, um, you look back through time, there's only a handful, but I mean, you look back starting at Tom Morris, you look at Bobby Jones, you look at Sarah's and you look at uh, Hagen, you look at Hogan, you look at Snead. Those are the great ones. Um, and they keep going with Trevino, Watson, Nicholas, all the, all those guys, those were the great ones. And there's not many of them in our sport over the years. Yeah. When you're in it, when you're in that moment, mm-hmm. you see a Tiger Woods come and you see what he's doing. Like, what are you thinking about? Like, why can't, why can't the players then just grab a little bit something that the great ones are doing, right? You're saying they're doing something different. Yeah. What is, it, what is that difference that like what, everyone What else the can difference replicate? is, I like there. There's more hold. They made they hold more putts when it counted than anybody did. They hit it good too. But my point is, Jack pretty much never missed when he needed. So that's what he says, and I believe him. And Tiger definitely didn't miss when he needed, ever. I mean, if you look back and go, how in the hell? Did they, did they, did that keep happening? You know, it, it just, it just did. And you look back, Torino made them all. Watson was ridiculous on the greens. Um, all those guys, you know, Hogan was like a mediocre putter, but a superior striker. There, there's, there's another example. Yeah. Hogan couldn't putt hardly at all comparatively to a Tiger. Right. Not even close, but he hit it better probably. I don't know. I never saw him strike, but um, uh, except for video, but. You know, Tiger was just all around the best guy. He had it all. Jack had most of it. But around the greens, there's no competition between Jack and Tiger. Zero competition. You see what he's done around the greens. Silly. Just had all the shots. Silly. Yeah. yeah. And it didn't matter the situation. He didn't, it didn't make any difference to him. You mean the situation in the tournament? Yeah. It didn't yeah. make a difference. Right. He didn't care. You know, Phil, same way. Phil didn't care. You think they cared where their last one was? We did. There is another thing. They did not ki- 50 yards offline. It's well, okay, let's go hit the next one. And in meantime, most of us are going, what the hell could possibly cause that to happen? Then you t- carry it to the next shot. And you try not to, 
Yeah. Um, and maybe they do too. They just don't tell us, but I doubt it. Yeah, I know they asked Patrick Cantlay last year during his hot run, you know, about his demeanor, and he mm-hmm. shows almost no emotion. Mm-hmm. It's, oh, it's in there. And and he said, you know, and he, he gives very thoughtful answers when he's asked good questions, especially. And I remember he brought up Tiger. He said, you know, I'll never understand how Tiger does what he does, where he shows so much emotion after a shot. He'll yeah. be frustrated or he'll be super jacked up. And he's like, but then when it's time to strike that next shot, 90 seconds or three minutes later or whatever it is, he is totally zen-like and he's in the new shot and it, it, nothing that's ever happened matters. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's amazing how, they, you, it's amazing how the, the great ones did that. And they all did. They all did. They didn't care. It, basically, they didn't care. They care, but you know what I mean? It's like the, it never affected them as far as we know. Um, I mean, I remember when Weiskopf was doing the announcing at Augusta and somebody asked him, was it maybe it was, it was either Venturi or somebody said, what do you think Jack's thinking right now? And he goes, well, if I'd have known that, I might have beat him once or twice. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Right. You know, Jack was like the ultimate at getting it around a golf course uh, in the big events. Well, in all events, but especially the big ones. I remember a couple of things that stuck out for me on how gutsy that the 2008 U.S. Open was for me was the back nine in the playoff. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when, when Tiger built a little bit of a lead and the whole world, as I'm sure you knew. It's like, okay, I built yeah, the lead for him. It was goes, okay. And then you just battled back and made yeah, a bunch it, of birdies. It, it was crazy. But, I mean, I, 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 I what did I make a mistake at? Um, I'm trying to think of where it's, where the, oh, I three-putted nine from 20. It was stupid. And then I didn't get up and down on 10 from, like, two feet off the green. It was pitiful. And he made a 25 footer on 10 for par. And I, I looked up, I went, really, really? That's what you're doing. And he just looked at me. Laugh. I had him laughing a few times, but I um, mean, have to, it's just golf. But um, when I walked off 10, I told Matthew, who's caddying for that. I said, if I do exactly what I know I can do with these last holes, I'm, he's not beating me. And I remember Matthew went, okay, you are three down. Okay. I said, I understand this. I understand this. And then, so I w- when I went to 16T, one ahead, I wasn't phased at all. I'm like, all right. And, and truthfully, I have really said this. When the four iron shot left the, flat, left the club on 16, I thought it was over because I hit it right where I was looking and it just didn't quite. And he hit a five iron, same place. Yep. We both misjudged a little bit because I'm thinking this ball, if this goes up there by the hole, we're done. Those here. are the ones that kind of stopped short, like in the middle. They, and yeah, they were back. so good. Yep. Both of them looked so good. Yep. Um, and then. But no, I, I really had no doubt when I woke up that I was going to win. I knew I, I, I put this way, I, I knew I had, I had a good chance to win Monday, the way I was playing. Because you don't get there by accident. Sorry. Right. Yeah. You know, everyone's like, what are you doing here? Well, I out. I'm hitting I it really hit good. It really I'm playing good. great golf. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, four days, you don't get lucky four days. No. Another one that really stuck out was the in the uh, 18th hole of the playoff. And you guys are both on. You both got pretty lengthy putts. His for Eagle, yours for Birdie. You both run it not far by but two, oh three fo, feet, they were far by three, but, and tiger makes his first and then i'm and then you and i'm thinking oh well, you were like, thinking this, this i was like what is this fucking guy thinking no here's right the, here's what happened so he it's a beautiful five iron on the green i drove it i couldn't reach the green unless i hit a big hook off the tee and i did it one day I hit it the first day I hit a big hook down there hit a three one on the green but i so i had to try to hit this big hooks and i hooked it into a left rough pretty much every day but so anyway i laid up hit a decent shot you know it's nervy it like 18, 16, 18 feet, mm-hmm. straight up the hill. Perfect place, a little left of the hole. So I'm thinking, he's got the eagle putt. I'm like, if he makes this and I miss, we're done here. We're done. Yeah. And I, I'm, a, a, a second ago, I was about to win yeah, the US Open. shot lead, right? Okay. Anyway, he puts it by, it wasn't three feet, it was about four feet, maybe okay. four and a half feet. Ooh. So I got the putt. I got exactly what I wanted, a chance to beat this kid. And um, he is a kid. I played it outside left and I just gave it a little too much gas, which is okay because if you leave it this far short, you're just going to kill yourself yep. on that green. You're just going to kill you. I'm going to kill myself right there. <laughs> oh, it looks so good right up until it stopped short. I mean, you got to die. But, um, and I gave it a little gas, just roll, so I roll it by about yay far, about three, oh, two and a half, three feet. Yeah. So, and no one talks about his putt either. They don't, if that putt doesn't, this is how he plays. If it doesn't go in, he's got 10 feet. Minimum 10 feet coming back. It went in like a, like a ground score. It went, you just buried it. it. Right. So now I got this to stay. And I remember Matthew goes, what do you think? And I went, I don't think anything. It's got to go in. Yeah. And I made it. But slight miss hit, it's missing. And yeah. we're done. And then I, I made the first mistake. I tried to kind of hold it off the left bunker. 
who tries that? Who, what kind of drawer tries that shot? And I didn't, it didn't hold. It stayed straight and went right in her toes, right up against the little left lip. Yeah. It was four feet to the right. I got a six iron shot. Not, not that I would have done any different, but it was, I would, I would hit it to the green. Yeah. But, um, that's the way it goes. It, it was, I was more disappointed that we weren't still playing. Right. It was so much fun. I couldn't stand it oh. because they all wanted the car wreck. Right. They all wanted the car wreck. And I remember in the press conference the night before I was first up and, um, they're like, well, you're a hundred thousandth ranked player in the world. You're 200 years old. What are you going to do tomorrow? This is going to happen. And I said, all right, look, after about 50, I said, look, I'm done here. Okay. What's going to happen tomorrow is you're going to get a show. I said him, he, Tiger was standing at the door. He and I are going to go play golf tomorrow. That's what's going to happen. You can think whatever you want. I do not care. And I walked out of the room because I'm like, yeah, enough. If you think I'm here because of accident, you're all full of shit because it wasn't an accident. Um, and then the Monday wasn't an accident either. It was just the coolest thing that ever you could ever do because it was over in everybody's mind after, you know, I was kind of thinking, Oh my God, this is going the wrong way fast. And then it turned. I kept hitting shot after shot where I was looking, he missed a couple and we're tied. And then he did miss one on 14 that shocked me for birdie, but eight foot. Yeah. I was ab I went, Whoa, was now that we're tied. you made the big one. You made the bomb. On no, 15? that was 15. That was 15. Um, but he, like I said, the great stuff, I drove right down the middle of the 15th fairway, hard tee shot. I got a five iron and he drove it 50 yards right of center line. Okay. So I'm on the, I hit this beautiful shot, 20 feet behind the hole. Matthew goes, where's Ty? Where, where? We didn't know where he was. He was in the fairway bunker on nine. <laughs> okay. But here comes the great stuff. So as I see the replay the next day or whenever, whenever I watched it, I don't know when I watched it. He's standing sideways, stand, basically standing on his head with his seven iron. And we don't know where he is. I mean, there's a million people and I'm in the fairway and it's over there. And I hear a click, I hear the shot. And Matthew goes, what at, wh where's that? I said, well, just watch the flag. I'm sure it's going. And it went in there inside where mine was. I'm like, son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I just kept shaking my head. I'm like, what the hell, what's going on? And I somehow make this putt. It was going a hut. It was really fast. And anyway, it went in going a hundred. So he's got a 15 footer and no one talks about it. He had a six feet by pour that in see those putts that's what they do right. we don't talk about it that's no one says anything I love about bringing the, those up those are so those moments he makes nobody that putt, talks it was because i'm standing on the side of the green knowing he's going to make it but i'm thinking to myself if he misses this putt we're done i'm two up with three to go it's not gonna i'm not i'm not unless he you know but it's not nothing's happening here but i knew he'd make it so i wasn't like oh shit he made it i knew he'd make it but there's always a chance but not necessarily with him because you know then i i almost make the birdie putt on 16 and he leaves it this far short from 40 feet dead in the heart or else now we're tied. So all this crazy, then 17, I drive good. He drives good. I'm actually in the first cut, but it was fine. I hit an eight iron way above my, and it, just on the front part of the green, he hits it behind the hole. I put it up this far right of the hole for three and a half, four feet. He misses birdie. How did I make that putt? Right. I don't remember anything about it. These are such clutch moments. Yeah, man. and they were, but no one talks about it. They always yeah. talk about the 18th and the playoff, which I get. Yeah. But before that all happened, things happened to be in that, and, and like I said, the great ones. When he made the, the, I'm telling you, you go back and look at 15 in that playoff, and you go, oh, my God, that was six feet. It was six feet by. Oh Game was over if he missed, but they, he doesn't. The, night, the day before, he went watching the playoff or watching the final rounds with you know, my family or something. Cause I wanted to see it. I remember my wife who I wasn't, um, I wasn't married to. I'd, I don't even think I, yeah, I'd, I'd known her, but I'd, I really wasn't, I know I hadn't met her yet. She goes, you what is all this, this hoopla road? about the U S open? I'm like, well, it was a cool day. And yeah, she mean, doesn't know. <laughs> I said, someday we'll watch it. So I, we watched it one day. Um, and we were in San Diego, we were watching it and she couldn't stop crying. I'm like, see, I told you, you know, you, you can't cool. explain it. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but everyone asks that question, do you mind talking about it? I'm like, why would I mind? U.S. Open playoffs or U.S. Opens, I guess, or majors. If you come down to the last hole and make an eight and lose by one, career's over. You lose a playoff to Tiger Woods, lose by one in the first playoff, well, career's not over. Because it wasn't because I did something horrible. I mishit it. I drove, hit it left on seven, but it's called, you know, human. Yeah. It happens. Right. Um, but it wasn't because of something really awful or miss it from a foot or no. even if I'd have missed that putt on, on, on the 90th hole, I don't know if I recover yeah. well from that. I mean, it hurt for a while, 
But then I won at Fry's a year, year and a half later, and that solved all my issues. I wanted to win one more time before I was done. I didn't want that open to be it, which wouldn't have been the worst thing. That's awesome. But it wasn't the worst thing. So, um, but you look at back at all that stuff, and I notice all that stuff. I'm going, I can't believe, on, and on regulation on Sunday, I had about a six or eight footer on 16 for par. If he misses, it's over. And, and that all of a sudden it came into play where he's in the playoff now. You know, his layup in the right rough on 18 on, on, on Sunday. Yeah. He's dead. And no they were asking him, close. I said, hey, um, what's the deal with that shot out of the rough? Hit and stopped, grabbed and fell down, you know, 15 feet instead of being 30 feet long. Or, I mean, if he was a horrible lie, he still would have done something to get a birdie putt. It's Tiger. Yeah. Okay. And then make the birdie putt. He goes, well, I was an old divot. I said, of course you were in an old divot. Of course you were. You know, but he, like I said, if he was in a horrible lot, he'd have found a way. Whether he made birdie or not is a different story, but he'd have found a way to have a putt at it. Yeah. But I'm saying all those things happened. You know, he didn't hit a really good tee shot all day until the 90th hole. Right. It was the most beautiful high cut you could ever imagine at 320. And he had a little five iron into the green. I mean, but my point is, so he hits a perfect tee shot. Can't walk. He, well, he was fine Monday. I mean, you couldn't tell. He never went down. He never wins. He never used any bullshit excuses. He, he was just Tiger. Um, and um, that tee shot was insane, but the five iron. Okay, yeah, okay, it's uh, 200 and whatever yards. But there's all kinds of death everywhere around this shot. And if he doesn't pull it off, it's over. Yeah, U.S. Open It's over. completely over. And he, he did exactly what I expected him to do because I remember, remember clapping going, really? You had to hit it, you know, I'm surprised he didn't hit five feet, but he hit it 30, 40 feet from the hole. But still, they, it didn't phase him. And he couldn't, like I said, he didn't hit a drive worth the crap most of the day. But the one on 18, whew, it was stupid. Gone. Did Tiger and Stevie give you shit for wearing red on Monday? Yeah, Tiger did. I walked over and, and it wasn't even planned. Trust me. It's like, did you try to get in his head? I'm like, yeah, that would work. Yeah. 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 I'm going to be the guy. I'm going to be the guy that does really it. trying to get him. Yeah. 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 That would one. work with him. Yeah. You just don't want to make him matter. Right. Right. Uh, a few guys tried that and it didn't work out well. No, for them. no. But no, I, I didn't have anything else to wear. I mean, it's Monday. I had a red shirt and a black vest and black pants, which I usually, which, which I usually wear. And I'm thinking it's Monday. I never thought about shirts. Trust me, when I woke up, I wasn't thinking about what I'm wearing. And when I got there, I said, I'm going to go say hello to him. You know, and he's down at the other end of the range, of course. <laughs> of course. So I walked down. And said, Matthew goes, what? I said, I'm going to go say morning. So I walked down. I got my coffee. I go, good morning. He looks up and he smiles. He goes, nice fucking shirt. And he started hitting balls. We were, it, was, it was funny. But I didn't do anything like that on to do. I, mean, I don't know. what. I didn't really care what Stevie said. Stevie made some of the dumbest comments I've ever heard in my life. Happy to share them. That Rocco, day? no, uh, recent, after, you know, yeah, 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 after yeah. that. Mm. Well, Rocco's a working class guy. He had no business being in there with Tiger. What the hell is he? Now I'm thinking to myself, whoa, 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 whoa. I am working class. My my dad was cut hair for 60 years. You know, we, 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 my dad worked his ass Pittsburgh, off, right? Maybe not, yeah. But what was Tiger? His dad busted his ass. He was working class. Same guy. Right. Just won 8 million majors and $4 billion. No difference. We came from, you know. It wasn't, it wasn't like he was born with a million dollars in his hand. Yeah. He earned all that. Mm -hmm. So the, saying something so stupid was like, what, what, what are you talking about? I don't deserve to be here. I, I, he had nothing to lose. That was a good one. I had nothing to lose. What's the most coveted thing I wanted in golf was U.S. Open trophy, especially with him. I had everything to lose. You think I was just throwing it around out there? I was having a ball, but no, no. I wanted to win just as much as he won. If he, anybody had nothing to lose, he didn't. So it's like you look at comments like that and go, why do you got to be so stupid? It's stupid. I tell him he's sitting right here. I don't care. Was he going to hit me? It would hurt because he's a big boy. But, um, <laughs> um, he, you know, going and saying that a nice thing about Steve, he did a great job with Tiger. He was exceptional. They were great together. But when you look at comments like that, you're like, why would you say something so asinine? I mean, we're out there both. We're just golfers. Right. You know, we, we, wherever you came from or, or brought, brought up with makes no difference. No. Nope. None. We're, at, we're all at this stage now. I mean, think about Tiger's Open. mom and dad when they were – he couldn't even get on golf courses, for Christ's sake. I mean, it's ridiculous what, what happened to him and what, what he – and obviously what he's done with the sport now and who he's brought to the sport and what he's brought to the sport and his foundation is ridiculous, what he's done with these kids. Mm -hmm. So I look at it that way.
No, I, I mean, that's I think, all I have to say about that. I think that makes <laughs> a lot of sense. I'm, I'm glad I asked. Yeah, I nothing, yeah. I nothing to lose. Yeah, your ass had nothing to lose. You had a, yeah, that was. Yeah, we've well, actually was, got him here. Can you bring him in, Jay? Yeah, bring him in. <laughs> this is the Maury show now. Yeah, bring him on in. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, it's really cool that you love talking about it because it, oh, yeah. it is. It was, it was, it is. and it is like, like you said, it's something that you should look at and clearly, as you know, but there's I, a it, reason people pride, talk I mean. about it. Yeah. Right. There's a reason people talk about that's it. right. Because, and the only reason they talk about it is because it was with him. Anybody else? We ain't talking about it. I don't know that I'd agree with that. Cause I think a, a big reason it's so iconic is yes, Tiger was doing all kinds of crazy shit and he's holing out and he's making eagles mm-hmm. and he had the leg and the whole thing. But I watched that too. I was right behind him. I'm like, really? <laughs> really? Yeah. But if it's not for Rocco Mediate, that thing's that whole well, week that's, is that not could be, as iconic because you pushed him to the brink. That you could be yeah. easily. You I, know, I never looked at it that way. Miss some yeah. of those shots. But that's what makes it so electric is like you forced him to have to hit those shots. You forced him to have to make the putt on, you know, the 72nd hole that nobody ever makes. You forced him in the right. playoff to go to a 91st hole. Like that's Rocco Mediate made that happen. Yeah, that was that was cool. Um, but I, I never thought anything about that part I, I was just enjoying the moment of trying to beat the guy in the biggest event you know in front of you can't hide there's nowhere to hide there's just us the stands were full at nine o'clock we didn't get there till whenever one <laughs> were you looking at him as tiger woods or looking at him as just another player no i i i look at him as tiger obviously but i'd played a lot of golf with him and i've played some of my best golf with him i, I we, we played the last two rounds at phoenix in 99 i bring this up because it was special for me mm-hmm. He was the number one player in the world. I had him Saturday and Sunday, one. Had a six-shot lead going into Saturday, uh, going into, going into uh, Sunday, excuse me. I shot 66 or 60, 66 on Saturday with him. And I remember saying this to him in a really cool way. He had about a six-footer for birdie on, on nine. We had to start in the front back nine because of the fog. Or whatever, frost, I don't know. Um, yeah, frost. Um, he's got a six-footer for birdie on nine to get back in the last group with me. No matter what he does, I got a six or a seven shot lead, but he wouldn't be with me. I said, knock in and let's play tomorrow. Just like that. Not like knock this in, I want your ass tomorrow. I said, knock this in, let's play tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As soon as he hits it, it's about this far from the hole. He walks over, he goes, you got me. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> what, what did I do? I didn't do anything. Right, I you slept were, for like four or five minutes that night. <laughs> you're like, oh, I was you're looking at the wrong course. way. Looking, yeah, no, no, I didn't mean like that. I meant I want to play with you again tomorrow. No, it's okay. God, and he just went. Do not tug on the cake. So, so, uh, so, yeah, but it wasn't a tug. It was like, it was no, I want to play tomorrow. I, I want you. I want to play with you again tomorrow. It was a pat on the back. But I got six shots. I got six shot lead. And yeah. Pete, who's caddying for me now, he goes, what's your plan for tomorrow? And I went, well, if I hit every fairway and every green, they can't beat me. That's what I thought. I hit like 16 greens and missed one or two fairways. Couldn't beat me. Um, and it, because I had a six shot lead. Yeah. Um, but trust me, it got dicey in there, but he was great. But I won that event with him. Changed my whole world. Cause I, you know, I had back surgery three years before that, blah, mm-hmm. blah, 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 blah. Who knows, knows what was gonna happen. And it happened. So cool. And it was, it was the coolest thing. And he always said to me, this is, this is a 20, was he 99, 28, 29, maybe? Ooh. No, no, he was 22 or three. Oh, yeah. Three, yeah, yeah, right. He won 97 Masters. So he's 23. And he goes, um, good to see you back. How did he know what the hell happened to me? You go back. He but... knows everything. Wow. He said, good to see you back. Because he knew, I obviously knew something was going on. But I, I'd played a little more golf with him back then. And um, I played some of my best rounds with him. Because I wanted to. I mean, I played nice golf with Greg Norman in the day. Because he was, I just enjoyed trying to see how I could do against him. But ten times in a row, I'm gonna lose nine. Simple, no big you deal to beat him that week. But I, I got, I got, I got one, which was cool. I think oh. we've heard that from uh, a bunch of players when we ask them about like, what's it like playing with Tiger, and they're like, I play my best golf because I wanted to play my yeah, best. Yeah, I golf. like the chaos. Right. See, the guys who didn't like the chaos paid. I love yeah. the noise. I love all the crazy stuff going on around when you're with him or with any of the great players. But Tiger brought it was chaos. Because everybody wanted to see the best guy that ever walked on grass, especially when you know, even when he was young, he was the best guy. I could see as a guy who likes a little bit of chaos. Oh, I love it. I love yeah. chaos. I, when I'm not in chaos, I don't know what to do with myself. Right. I'm, I'm bored. Um, <laughs> um, and, and you know, we, we a lot of events out here will get people, a lot of people sometimes, um, 
and I like the noise. And you know, if you're not playing good, there's no noise, no matter what. No one's right. watching. But if you are, it's it's fun to have noise. No wonder you did well at the Phoenix Open. Yeah, it's gotten a bit out of hand. I have to say, I'm not a fan. But um, it was just for example. I'll give you a good example about Tiger and what he's had to deal with um, that we don't ever really see. But I saw it that day. We're coming off five green. We're hitting our balls off six T uh, at Phoenix. This is on Sunday. And we hit our tee shots. We're walking. And two big, I don't know if they were FBI guys or security guys, came and tackled this guy that was 300 pounds, hit him right in front of us. Came down the hill. He had a gun on him. Oh. Now, what the fuck was he doing with a gun at the Phoenix Open watching us play golf? And Tiger wasn't even phased. Just went, yeah, just kept walking. Jeez. Really? So, please. You know, guys that go after him for whatever reason they go after him really i always say this all the trouble that happened to a lot of us over the years um but back when all that bullshit happened with him what because he's the most well-known player in the world he's not human really did you make any mistakes in your life no well then you must be gone because he's the only one i know that hasn't made a mistake so please back off and um you, you look at it that way going and nowadays everything's in front of us there's cameras everywhere. Yep. You say one thing and it's taken out of context, you're dead. Oh, now I got to defend myself for saying nothing. Right, right. I got to defend myself or you got to defend yourself because you said something with the boys that someone said, no, no, you can't say that. That's uh, something. Now I got to defend myself? Horseshit. It's all horseshit. <laughs> Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Yeah, what that guy's had to do. I mean, you've seen oh my God. Front, but nobody can possibly imagine what it must be like or how they would handle themselves if they had to deal with all that. the most recognizable person on the planet it would be cool to be like that for like a week or two but other than that i don't know maybe like up, two days you get yeah you give up everything everything but that was the that was what he wanted yeah he wanted to be the best guy and he is um um and he was for a long 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 time and if you look at what he's doing now i mean what I saw was remarkable and um, at the, the father son thing. And by yeah, the way, how about BNC. Charlie? Good Lord. Oh, God, wow. So clutch it's, under that pressure on but the stage. The golf swing though. Phenomenal. I mean, yeah. I mean, how about living up to that? I mean, but he may be, but if he has tiger's mind, it's not going to be an issue. <laughs> I don't know if it can come around again. I, that's, I don't know. You never know. Yeah, you don't. But I, I think he'll be pretty good. I, I think it'll be pretty good, but we'll see. It, it'll be fun to watch him grow up and see what he does and all yeah. that stuff. But it, it was cool to see Tiger how he is. Now, I haven't talked to him in a hundred years, so I, I. But it's cool to see how he's become and when it, that all happened last year at this time, basically. Mm -hmm. I was at. I remember I was at um, the course down the road, and I got a call. Was he going to play again? I'm like, well, how about if we get him to walk first? Maybe we can, maybe we go there. Maybe we can play with his kids and hang out with his kids. It'd be normal, normal. Uh, once and obviously he's he's got that done. Thank goodness. But um, yeah, one of the most special people that we'll ever have in our sport. Yeah. Simple as yeah. That. Now he's looking like he's even happier. Right. So oh, he looks so happy really this cool. last weekend. He's smiling, he's he looks so yeah, happy. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, and if he does decide if he's able to walk again, walk like he wants to walk again, because obviously you saw he can swing a golf club still. Mm -hmm. um, he ain't done winning. I don't think so either. No, no, no. They. Everyone says, "What are you talking about?" I said. It's Tiger. It's not me. It's not anybody else. It's him. You know, you look at the Hogan stuff. Um, you know, it was very similar. Um, obviously, Hogan stuff was way a long time ago, and there was no medical. I mean, they had to tie stuff together. It was ridiculous what they did to Hogan. But it's in the same vein. And if anybody could pull it off, hopefully he'll come back and play if he can. It'd be, but do we want more? Do we really need to be this greedy at first and now when you see him swing I'm like yep i want more right yep i want it now uh, it, <laughs> that's it's right. so true yeah i want it right now you yeah do. <laughs> I'm, I'm greedy yeah i want to see it more you know well, not, right now, now that he can walk and now that he can hang out with his kids and be kind of normal start good. the masters right, now right. Let's go. start yeah. the masters yeah. right that's all you're doing all right what i want it right now <laughs> yeah I but I, i'll bet you and i don't know he's gonna surprise us and just show up one week somehow <laughs> think so when yeah i hope so i think you're right as long as he can you know the walking part obviously is brutal what's happened to that to him with, with the injury but you know now that he's kind of swinging anything's possible yeah hey, you came back from some back stuff yeah i had a career-ending injury that they were wrong about but th that's what surprised me his his stuff was uh, there were so many of them it was yeah. hard to recover from it and then it gets into your golf swing and you're toast 
because once you once your body fails, you can't do what you need to do, and it, it's no fun at any level, at any level. Well, look, man, it's been awesome catching up Seriously. with you. You guys have great, phenomenal personality and storytelling. <laughs> I can tell you, I, I have it. some good ones, uh, and it's fun talking about them because you know, I've been around a long time out here. I've seen a lot. I pay attention. It's yeah. my curse. And I'd say, you know, in golf, we always love people that clearly just love it. That yeah. Love golf, love the yeah. story. I get love to hang with the best it. players alive still. Yeah. I mean, and what can we do? Can we do something with Bernhard? Can we find him a hobby? Yeah, you got to do so something Anything else. we can do. I love it. You know, going back to one more thing about Tiger, it's like my buddies would go, don't you love it when Tiger's not playing in the event you're at? I'm like, no. Why would I love that? I would rather him be there. You know, Bernhard, I'd rather him be here. He's our best guy, period. It's at 145 years old, he's our best guy. <laughs> okay, I don't care when he, it's a G, it's what he's doing is stupid. Yeah. How ridiculous it is. Um, in all aspects of the game, not just putting, it's everything. It has to be. You can't win if you do one thing right. right. Um, and he keeps continuing to do it. So it's like, are we going to see, you know, is he going to beat Hale's record? Well, apparently it's not out of his head. Because, you know, a year ago you go, well, no, he can't win five or six more times. Well, he's won four of them. <laughs> <laughs> and he's not even close to being done. Right. But you look at that and the, the great ones, you know, Bernhard was a great regular tour player. Obviously he won two masters and a bunch of other tournaments, 80, some 90, some other tournaments, not Connie here. Um, amazing stuff. So that was, like I said, the great ones, period. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, your passion, everything about you is just awesome. I'm glad, I'm glad we got to do this. We've Good. been following you for, for a long time. It's fun. Yeah. I think I should get up to, what are you guys at 13 million? I'm a little, <laughs> I'm got, a little we behind. Got, we got a few. <laughs> We got a, a little behind. I'm like 13 million behind right now as we speak. But I'll, I'll you know, you just it's fun doing it. It's fun doing it. I'm not yeah. looking for, I just like some of the comments that are like, oh my God, that's so cool that you, I, that really helped. Um, I, I enjoy that because you want to be able to help. Jackie Burke told us in the old days, your job, if you're not too stupid to do it, that's Jackie, is to promote your game and help. Now, sometimes guys don't know what you're talking about. It hurts. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. But I, it's some of the stuff so simple that I tell everybody that they, they enjoy it. And I like that part. Sometimes you get a comment here or there, but not many. Well, I was going to say, you not don't want to get too big because then the comments might switch. Well, bring it. Well, I can turn around too. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I can say things you don't need to hear either. If you <laughs> want to say them to me, I'll be happy to say them. Let's get this guy um, following. I want to see It doesn't bother me at all, but it, it, it doesn't. It's fine. You know, it's fine. Some people don't like you because they just don't like you. And that's yeah. fine too. Yeah, you're never going to be able to change yeah. that. No. That's what it is. No, I'm good. Well, but it's been fun. But I love what you guys, it's it's fun stuff. I was, I was when they said you guys wanted to talk, I went, to me? I'll do that. Of kidding course. me? This, <laughs> this is phenomenal. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So Anytime. Good. The fans, the audience Anytime. are going to love this. The stories, just all good. your insight, it's awesome. So Yeah, the, the like I said, the U.S. Open talk is, is great. And, you know, why would I be upset about it? You know what I mean? Yeah, of course I want the trophy. Oh, I said this too. In my days back, I'm drinking a lot and stuff like that. I wonder what all that money would have done to me. I look back and go, I wouldn't be married to my wife now, for sure. I wouldn't have a six-year-old daughter, for sure. I'm, I'm guessing. I mean, I'm probably 90% sure that probably wouldn't have happened. So I'm not saying I'm glad I lost, but I wonder what would have happened. It probably wouldn't have been good. <laughs> if you give me carte blanche to do anything I want, problem. <laughs> Big problem. <laughs> but um, That's good self-awareness. Thank God I didn't win that U.S. Open. My wife is phenomenal. Jess is awesome. And Francesca, the little one. I have three older boys, Rocco, Nico, and Marco. And obviously I love them dearly, but I tell them and joke around. And sometimes it's not a joke. I'm like, you know, boys, I love you, but not like her. Dad, come on. <laughs> I said, all right, almost like her. And, you know, because it's my only girl. And she's, yeah. and I've had the best time ever um, You know, watching her grow up. And now it's almost seven. So. Who knows what would have happened? I don't think this would have happened, so I'm, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> you're like a guy with a lottery ticket. You got the first four numbers right. The fifth one comes out wrong, and you're like, yes. yes that's perfect. I could have never handled that. <laughs> I don't yeah. know what would have happened. <laughs> would have I don't know. It would have been cool to find out, but maybe it wouldn't have been. I don't know. <laughs> you did all right for yourself. Yeah, you yeah, seem I'm fine. Right. You know, I'm right. fine. Great. Doing no great. complaints. Yeah. Yeah. You seem happy. You seem uh, <laughs> yeah. like you're in a great that's place. Good. That's all you can have. That's good. I still get to play for a living. Like I said, I never had a job. In our tour, the, 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 it still should be called the senior tour. I'm sorry. It should be because you know why? We're seniors. <laughs> but it's it's PGA Tour champions. We'll call it the senior tour. It's That's ridiculous. We'll call it whatever the hell we yeah. want. And you see, you watch. You watch every week. when or, or The guys, we work our butts off because you have to. Mm -hmm. yep. You'll get your butt handed to you out here if you don't. And, you know, we see that every week.
Well, good but luck. We still got to find Bernhard a hobby. That's the job. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we could do Absolutely. that. We'll work on that. Rocco Media, you're the got man. It, we appreciate it. Anytime. Thank you Thank so you. much.